Okay, first of all, we get tits. Okay, not gonna lie, we get tits. We get it, tits. it's triggered. Sometimes they like. No, no, Nate, 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 Nate. We get tits, full tits, no cover-ups, literal tits. Yeah. What? How's it going, uh, on YouTube? Darker Viewer here, and yeah, we're good. This is going to be kind of something different for a lot of us, and for me personally, this is going to be the last video I need to do for a while because I have some stuff piling on and expenses. It's just it might be a little too crazy. So, but maybe one of these guys can actually do a, a spinoff that we can actually add, and make the channel grow, and they can actually. Host oh, something at, and I'll just be part of it. Yep. Don't look at me, man. All I know about a computer is just point click and let the magic happen. Okay. I, mean, well, you I know how to turn it on and turn it off. That's guys, it. Guys, he's just like every me. woman. <laughs> <laughs> what? <That's stupid. laughs> oh my god. Oh, awesome start. And you're the one that started the fanfic trio out of everyone. Oh. Okay, just yeah. Well, but this is the thing we're actually be doing kind of a uh Kind of like a podcast in a way. If you guys know uh, uh, Gigux uh, and his and his buddies, uh, uh, Trash Taste, they they do something like this all the time. So I figured, and this way actually be a little bit better because we do tend to take quite a while explaining stuff, and this may be even more so like that as well because we are doing our top ten favorite manga and light novels. But Yay. we're also opening it up to like we can actually ask questions as well, just make it like a conversation, so we're not too tired in mm -hmm. a way because i know these one of these two is like one is like three hours one is two hours ahead of us exactly <laughs> so so for actually Thank going off we're going to start us off with honorable mentions this time around mm -hmm. so to start off with honorable mentions we're going to go to kevin and mm -hmm. then nicholas and then nate and then me for that and then nice. we'll just go right into the podcast all right. Nice, nice. Let's hit it. Code breaker. A comic got killed. Rosario Vampire. The Asterisk War by Yu Miyazaki. The Asterisk War, Queen Vale's Wings. I'm gonna kill zero. Pokemon Adventures. Tower of God by CU and Lee Jong Hyu. Red Hood Guild. Blue Exorcist. A Kamiga Kill. Jojo by Horihiko Ar Arakai. Bleach. From the Red Fog. Ruby manga version. Bleach by Tidy Kubo. Burn the Witch. High School DXD. Fairy Tale. Helsing by Kota Hirano. Food War right now. Needless. Jojo. Kill or Kill, the manga by Ryu Akazuki. Jujutsu Kaisen. Rise okay. of the Demon King. Bleach. Berserk by Kentara Miura. A certain scientist well done, manga version. Tokyo Ghoul. 
burned a witch. So a spider. So what? By Okina Aba. Rent a really shy girlfriend. Genshin Impact manga version. Eden Zero by Hiro Mashima. Aria the Scarlet Ammo. One Piece. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> just that reaction. That's actually my reaction. Too, what okay. the fuck, dude? <laughs> I mean, hey, it takes time and effort, man. Like, it's not. If it takes that much time, it's not worth that much effort. <laughs> Dance in the Vampire Bun by Nozomo Tamaki. That time I got reincarnated as a slime. Light novel version. Magical Girl Spike Ops Asuka by Bokuto Fukami. God of High School by Gat Mobile High School. Fairy Tale by Hiromashima. And a Kamiga Kill by Takahiro. Okay, okay. Yeah. So so pretty interesting, uh interesting uh like choice, I would say, for uh honorable bench. <laughs> and then there's Nate who puts <laughs> Oh my god. You're funny. welcome. <laughs> but yeah, the, these ones I'm just like, oh my god, what the hell is with some of these choices on on this grid? Oh Especially my. this one for Trey. Oh, I want to uh, see. Here's how he put it. He put Kaiju number eight and number ten. <clears throat> that yeah, we, oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, then I'm Claymore. Not the Kaiju fan, and yet I have that thing higher. Yep. <laughs> then Claymore Clay at number nine. I totally forgot about Clay. I even read Claymore, dude. Mm. <laughs> Moggy Labyrinth of Magic. We kind of figured that was going to be there. And the Undead Unluck, basically the other one that he wants animated aside from Orient. Hmm. Uh, Dora Hidoro. Yeah. Ooh. I was surprised by that. Hmm. And he put Berserk up there in the top. Respect. And Hell's Paradise. I have no, I don't know what that one is. No That's one does. The Record of Ragnarok, the better version, not that fucking anime version. <laughs> Oh, yeah, shocker! Yeah. Netflix botched an anime. Who would have thought? <laughs> that's of course, like, that's a of 50, course, 50 JoJo. JoJo, but <laughs> why? Run. And then I was surprised by this. He actually put Chainsaw Man number one. I and no I'm surprise he never had JJK. I'm yeah, surprised he exactly. didn't put One Piece on it. Yeah. Wow! Yeah. Like, damn, Trey was very, very like questionable. <laughs> yes 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 i would i would say very I mean, very, very like if he was here and told us that i would have been pissed off twice due to the low entries yeah but <laughs> you know what he's not here so we'll just say this fuck you trey yeah but yeah the next person on, on this uh like the stars on the grid is actually good old boy nate and i have some very interesting questions about your grid right here my friend <laughs> <laughs> like very very interesting yeah, it was a bit interesting to say the least because some of them were like circumventing, but I was like, nah, might as well. <laughs> but yeah, go ahead, go ahead, lead, lead, lead us off, man. Go ahead and talk about the uh, like you what you have for your note. Why, why'd you put like the like some of these like brand new stuff that you started watching? Like, um, what was your number 10 again? <laughs> hey, oh, my video. number 10. It- we all know My Hair Academia, but this one is actually made by another person who worked on it. Well, it's Hunter's Guild Red Hood. Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah, I was... Yeah. Seeing that, yeah, then, you, was... then you put, like, Shikamori at number nine, and then Rent a, rent a Really Shy Girlfriend. Not even the original Rent a Girlfriend on, on the list there, man. I have not read the Rent a Girlfriend manga yet. I just no, read yeah. the spinoff one, but I'll get to that later. But anyway, what I really like about the Hunter's Guild manga is that it pretty much takes the inspiration from the old grim fairy tales and they actually elevated it because it actually made it pretty dark because no lie those werewolves are frightening oh yeah true true and i i mean the style is actually pretty pretty interesting was there anything uh, like kind of uh interesting to you of how you got to that to the part of the manga 
Uh, what got my attention is that it was also made by the same person from My Hero Academia, but I hear they're going for more horror route. So I'm like, okay, I might as well check this out. And Oh, really? Werewolves are horror about you. What gave it away? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair point. Yeah. But I do love how they approach it. Like, we have our main character, Velo. Uh, sorry if I pronounced it wrong. It's been a while since I read, like, the whole manga. <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely love how they showcase the main character who is pretty much a base off of Little Red Riding Hood but as a boy. <laughs> hmm. Sex change. Yeah, that was an interesting change. Like, well, yeah, like that. Well, it also like, doesn't exist, so who that, cares? That too, but yeah, go. That, like, on, on a scale of how you would recommend this, would you recommend this to, to anybody who's uh, interested in this kind of theme? I, yeah, I would only recommend it if you're into like horror and all that you know or if you're a fan of my hero academia then you might be able to like to get into it because it does have some of the traits that my hero academia has but in a classic fairy tale tree right although i put it very low because of one reason yeah, it was pretty short-lived yeah only 13 oh, yeah. the 18 chapters of that 18? thing Fuck me, man. wow yeah, that's, that, that is short. short damn yeah, because, oh. like, it, it was going at a good pace until it was like, oh, it was announced that it's going to come to an end soon. Which I don't blame them, because around the end, so much shit has happened. <laughs> wow. Like, it just literally jumped to endgame. Like, you know how people complained about, like, Jujutsu Kaisen jumping to shark quickly? This yeah. one jumped to shark even more. <laughs> wow. I mean, okay, uh, would you say that the main character is interesting, or is there a character that in the manga that you actually liked more than the main character. Mm, I mean, I don't hate the main character or anything. Like, I think it was just, like, an average character in a way. Like, mm. it's how I view Ayato from Astro War and Yuito from Scarlet Nexus. Like, where I don't hate the main character. I just like so many other ones a bit more. Yes. Okay. Uh, the female character, Grimm. Yeah, that bunch of fan art really explained it all, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. That's not wrong about that, but I'm... I'm actually surprised you put uh, Shikamori on this. I mean, yeah. espe- especially for how recent the anime has come. Yep. Dude, he's binge read it. He binge read it, and it's crazy. Like, yeah. go, explain. Is it like? Is this like? Would this actually be uh, more like your favorite over like my dress up darling? Um, honestly, yeah, because nothing against Dress Up Darling. It's a really good slice of light anime, and I definitely love the unique approach of Brandon cosplay to it. I really like it. But when I saw Shikamori, because I was like confused about like, wait, Shikamori's not just a cutie. What's up with that? <laughs> then I just saw the first episode of the anime. I was actually in- interested in it because Shikamori, she's that girlfriend that you just want to have in real life. Because not only she's just like cute and beautiful, but damn, she's badass and sporty. Yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, she's literally a tomboy. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. after the first episode, I decided I'd like to read the manga, and I had to admit, it was so different from how the anime interpreted it. Because the first episode, it's literally a combination of like different skits. Because that's what the manga is about. It's just different skits showing like basic, basic daily life stuff. <laughs> Though I will say, I, I had to say some of my favorite moments from the manga is when Shikamori decided like to flirt with Izumi <laughs> and yet that backfired. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 pretty obvious to know like they the any type of slice of life they're gonna have to throw in that little yeah. niche, that little cliche right there to try and make it at yeah, least somewhat like, funny. Yeah, because usually in those kind of situations, it's usually like the girl that doesn't get flustered afterwards, but in this case, the girl got flustered it was like oh my god, I came too forward. <laughs> this is why I love Crunchy Rolls like title. It was like, step one, flirt. Step two, regret. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's like, and uh, definitely, a, definitely a good recommendation, especially for those who are watching the anime. Yeah, definitely. Because like most of like the other moments in the manga, like it, it's just like straight up wholesome. I'm still reading it, which is why I can put it so low. But even with that, I still really enjoy some of like the cute and wholesome moments. Also, okay. quick note: Is it yeah. weird that one of Izumi's friend, the sub and dub voice, it's literally an alternate version of Bakugo, except he's not much of an asshole? Yeah, because it is Clever Chapman as uh, as Izumi's best friend. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. Yeah. No, Izumi's best friend is really cool. I really like him. Oh yeah, yeah. he's cool, but 
yeah i'm really uh curious about about this one about a uh, rent a really shy girlfriend that oh was, yeah like wow okay man i'm explain uh, i'm ex- curious about that one okay because i was watching rent a girlfriend out of my own merit because i was curious and then after seeing like the episode featuring my best girl sumi sakurazawa <laughs> oh my god she's so adorable <laughs> and when i and i just like I was just like looking through like the different Wikipedia just so I can understand the characters a bit more. But when I look at Sumi, I was like, Son of a bitch. She, had, she has a spinoff novel? Yeah. Seriously? I, I literally had to look it up. I sent the link to Kevin. And <laughs> Kevin's reaction is just like, yep, yeah, that, that, we're definitely reading like, this. That, that, that's a thing. <laughs> yeah, I read it and it was awesome. Yeah, it was just straight up wholesome. Like it really sums up Sumi's character. It's pretty much, yeah, a slice of life, but it's also like Sumi tried to overcome her own struggle, which honestly, that's actually a really good case to it because Sumi is a really shy girl. She wants to be a better girlfriend. It's just, she's very insecure all the time. Oh, yeah. I mean, compared to bombshells like Chizuru and Ruka, you can't blame her. Yeah. (laughs) And (laughs) most of the moments that involve like Sumi tried to overcome the struggles, it's actually really interesting. One of my favorite moments in the chapter was definitely when she brought her dog to the park. Yes! That was awesome. I love it. That was so sweet. She was like, okay, all right, I have a dog. I have to be careful because if my dog plays with their dog, then we have that conversation. I need to find ways to like get around it. I'm like, what the fuck, Sumi? And the dog, the best thing, the dog was like, kind of forced Sumi in that situation. It's like, no, 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 don't make it worse. Oh, God, that's hilarious. And the other moment I had to love was that Shizuru cameo where both of them were talking. And yes, that was a really good introduction to that. I thought that was a really good tie in. I know, like, that's why I love Chizuru. She's like, she does this for her own merit to get money, but she it's not like she's heartless and won't help. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. Chizuru does help out Sumi, so. Okay, and is it wrong that I kind like, okay, look, this is just me as a guy. I kind of want to see them go on a date. Chizuru and Sumi? Yes. yes. <laughs> like, like, can you blame me? Like, multiple times Sumi has said, Oh my god, she's through so much. She's so beautiful. I'm like, oh my god. If the person I read to girlfriends watching this, there's your idea for another spinoff. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> I hate oh. you, but I love God oh, damn, love. man. Okay, but uh surprisingly, I was at least somewhat impressed that you put a demon slayer in the in there, like at least like low, but actually above some of the others, like. I mean, yeah. we know, like, for a fact, uh, yeah, Demon Slayer had, like, a uh, like multiple, like, changes that they did at the ending because people were like, what the, my, didn't fa- my favorite ship didn't happen. Okay, yeah, because, like, the ship thing, it didn't really bug me that much because, like, at this point, it was like, hey, if the manga creator wants to go with that, that's fine by me. Yeah, I agreed. No, yeah. But, yeah, I'm just, like, do you think, like, from the anime standpoint, that Demon Slayer is, like, at least staying true to it? forward in a way yeah like looking back and forth at the manga and the anime i thought it was like very interesting because like the only thing that the anime did change a bit was adding like the visuals for the breeding styles yeah yeah that was a cool idea yeah i mean there's nothing wrong with like the manga because like looking at the later arcs oh man most of them are quite interesting and it actually gave me more depth to some of the high heroes like at first, I didn't have high hopes for Mitsuri, but after reading the Swordsmith's village arc, it actually changed my opinion on her a bit more. As long as that other Hashira, the Miss Hashira. Still, favorite, I favorite arc to me, actually. I, I love that arc. Plus, it focuses on one of my favorite underrated characters, Haganesca. I, <laughs> like, at first, we just see Haganesca as this comedic character, but then looking at the Swordsmith village arc, I was like, this motherfucker. This yeah. boy. <laughs> yeah. And then this especially one. when we're going to get to see uh, upper rank Four. Oh, yeah. Upper rank four is frightening. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back up, back up, back up, back up. They skip a rank? Yeah. Not really, sk- it- not really skip a rank. It's more like it's kind of hard to explain, especially when, especially when you're trying to figure out like how the demons like really put in yeah. a, It's not like a yeah. regular okay. scaling okay. thing. Okay, but, but, okay but think yeah. it's like this, Nicholas. World War Five. 
Peter, I told you, and there has to be World War Three and Four. Oh no, no, no! Here's the that's the thing, Lois. World War Five is so intense they skip over the other two. That's pretty much yeah. it. Yeah, oh, yeah, pretty wow. much. <laughs> I mean, we'll we'll probably see. I mean, like I'm sure everyone else has probably heard these in the articles that Demon Slayer's anime is good change up slightly a little bit how the uh, manga ended so yeah i'm actually sure that works yeah which is weird considering the some of the later villains that we get to see a lot of them are really interesting even yeah. though i freaking hate the upper egg two guy fuck that guy you're supposed yeah. to hate the villains yeah though he was a good villain i will admit yeah but i really just can't wait to see how they would do that for like upper rank one. That fight is gonna be oh, good. Oh yeah, that that's gonna be very interesting because upper yeah. rank one. Okay, continue. Okay, but here's the controversial, my friend. You put this one that you, me, and Kevin love a lot. You put this guy low. <laughs> I'm really, really curious on how on, on, on that one. Oh, this I gotta, I gotta um, see the salt on this. Wait, 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 Nicholas, wait, Nicholas. Do you have any tea or anything to drink? Just enjoy, just enjoy the chaos. Look, as much as I like Kaiju Number Eight, it comes from like my own standpoint where I'm not the biggest Kaiju fan. Because like, if you look at my monsters list you would know I didn't have that much kaiju on my main list. It's mainly because I don't really get myself invested into the kaiju franchise. But after hearing some interesting things about kaiju number eight, I'm like, okay, I might as well get this a shot. Yeah. Now, and then you're like, you were like, oh my gosh, I probably need to rethink my choice. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Because I, what I like about kaiju number eight is how it took like the classic kaiju genre and they actually make it unique because, like, instead of fighting the kaiju, you have a main character who can transform into a kaiju. Which, yeah. And I have to admit, the kaiju design looks pretty good, even though it kind of reminds me, like, don't you think that actually fits into the Bleach universe? Because that. No, oh, yeah, cool. it, it really does, especially when you actually look at the uh, the uh, actual concepts for like the uh, the story, the story artist, uh, and also the the writer for it. And I, now you Matsumoto is also yeah. good friends with 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 Kobo, so yeah, he actually they actually course like a kind of did like a mixture of ideas for wanting to give these kaiju like hollow s kind of forms, but staying true to like earth matter material. Exactly, which I think that really works out well. Plus, what I also love about kaiju number eight is the characters. Kafka is actually a really good main character. I actually enjoyed him. Reno is a really good rival. Kikoro is, she's badass, along with Ashiro. And yeah. Yoshino. Oh, yeah, Yoshino, though, is best boy in that series. Uh, he's, wait, oh, you mean Levi? You mean yeah. Levi? <laughs> Come yeah, on. The, the comedic version of Levi. I, I love that guy. What are, what are you talking about? Like, Levi is comedic. He can't, he can't keep a straight face when he wants to clean anything. I know. Well, to be fair, he's he, hiding under a mask. That also plus true. He, he, plus, he is short. <laughs> it's, it's like I'm a foot and a half taller than you. Then whatever. What you say? I said I can't hear you from down there. Speak up, boy! I can't hear, I can't you, hear you from up there. there. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Wait, well, are you saying like we could uh, possibly see some of that stuff improve on? Maybe actually get you invested if when we get the anime. Yeah, because like I'm hoping that there are different studios from it. I'm trying to remember who was like the one in charge of licensing it. It's like it was uh, even Toei. Like... Yeah, Toei oh. from Dragon Ball. Ooh. So who knows? It'd be interesting, you know, because all right, uh, but Nate, what was your favorite fight from Kaiju? Mm, I would say it had to be the fight between Yoshino and I keep forgetting the name of the Kaiju. The Kaiju number seven or nine yeah it was like seven or nine because yeah. that was like kaiju at his series that was like freaking yoshino at his seriousness like at most of the times we get seen this jokester kind of person but then when you get to see him in battle you get to see why he's one of the best fighters out there All i right. want a death battle i want a death battle with him and levi that'd be awesome yeah because you got like kaiju number eight strongest soldier with attack of titan's strongest soldier that that alone will be awesome. Exactly. Who knows? Who knows? Probably when the anime comes out, they'll be voiced by the same uh, sub and dub actor. Oh my god! Would not just... surprise me if that, that so is true. I am gonna geek out. Yeah, that, but that'd we... be that'd be so cool if, if we see it. But yeah, now okay. So like on a scale 
of uh, one to ten, how would you rate your ten, your ten through six? So what, what would you, uh, what, what would you say to those? Mm, I think for number ten, I would probably give it a seven out of ten. Like it's pretty decent. It's just like a little rush. That's all. Yeah, just uh, a little bit. For Shikimori and Rita's girlfriend, I would give it like a seven point five out of ten for how wholesome it is. Yep. Hmm. Uh, for Demon Slayer, I would give it a 7.8, mainly because I definitely love how it presented the storylines. For Kaichi number 8, it would definitely be a 7.9 out of 10 for me. Okay. All right. So, like, okay. So, we'll go ahead and go into your, to these ones, which I am really, really curious how you, how, how you tried to schedule these ones. Like, you had Jujutsu Kaisen at number, at number 5. Then you put Black Clover above that, and then Rising the Shield Hero, and then even Zero, just shy of your, of your number one. I'm really curious about that, especially with how your standpoint is with, with JJK at the moment. Yeah, because that's the thing. I really love JJK, don't get me wrong. But even though I love something, that does not mean I don't have my problems with it. Because like while the Shibuya arc was really intense and all, there are some moments in there, here and there, that piss me off. And one of them, I am not going to get into spoilers, but I know for a fact that Nicholas is also going to get pissed too. <laughs> Most likely. Yeah. But, uh, but regarding the fact, like, how do you think that would probably, do you think like MAPPA did justice doing both the season and the JJK movie? Oh, yeah. It actually did justice to both of them because, like, the anime, like, Sometimes when it comes to, like, adapting to things, they can either, like, elevate it or just, like, stay true to it. I feel like MAPPA kind of did a bit of both for the anime, but when they did the movie for it, though... Yeah. It literally skyrocketed. I, I just freaking love that movie. Plus, I even love some of the later arcs from the manga, like the calling games. I had to admit, I was quite intrigued by it. And the the fact that we get to see some of my favorite characters, like we got to see Maki. Oh man. It made me love Maki more, but oh my God, I am also terrified of her. <laughs> I think that was the point. Call that a healthy respect. <laughs> and, but yeah, that, that's, that's always good. I mean, you also, I mean, you also, I mean, you also didn't really, especially on your album, you didn't put like the JJK zero prequel. You didn't talk about that actually. Yeah, because like I figure I might as well like merge the JJK and JJK Zero as like one thing because it's technically in one timeline if you think about it. It is, it is. But I but still like, love the prequel because, and the especially manga- uh, thinking of going uh, forward and like the way JJK is, how do you think people if they just read if they just know the anime, how would they handle the Shibuya arc and everything going forward? You're gonna fucking break. Everyone's gonna hate. They're you gonna break, break easily. Nicholas is going to be so mad he's going to break his TV and then he'll tell Trey he owes him one. Okay? It's that yeah. Wow, did it go that bad? No, well, okay, it's not that it's bad. It's just it does too much. Okay? Yeah. It does way too much. There are some moments that, again, I got pissed at it, and I'm sure you'll get pissed at too. Yes. Try okay, to- then, but how about, how about going off to the uh, medieval better version of Naruto and Fairy Tale with Black Clover? I was... <laughs> That's one. I I actually prefer a different ver- phrasing. It's Harry Potter as a knight, but dumb. <laughs> okay, that that, 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 that sums it up. Because <laughs> yeah. we, we we know like you explained this before how you uh you basically got into Black Clover from us uh, because the because these two were bullying you into it. <laughs> oh, yeah, you should be very happy. If, you should th- you should be thanking us. I mean, technically, I did get my revenge for putting a number nine for soundtrack. So I did that as, like, part of revenge, so. <laughs> and then he, and he put fucking Ruby on top. <laughs> put what on top? Put, I put Ruby higher than Black Clover. And, 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 and slime. And Trey was like, oh, my fucking. Oh, my fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least with Nicholas, he's like, he found out. I was like, hey, he's doing it like a very long standpoint so at least he understands it if nicholas does that then you know the world's ending (laughs) but how how do you think about the uh the whole thing with black clover like do you as we know like trey who's unfortunately not here with us he he really sees this as as like a night and day kind of 
like a uh, situation. Like, do you think that that kind of like kind of goes with the fact we know for a fact that Black Clover has some inconsistency with the animation? Did you think did that kind of hurt your love for it, or like just the manga kind of fixed it? Yeah, because like with the anime, like the animation early on, that's what kind of killed it. Because like I'm an artist, so I know how like to make sure like the art looks good and all. But with the animation, it kind of lacks a bit. Thankfully, the Spain Kingdom art really fixed that a bit. Is anybody else excited for the movie? Yes. Yes. I'm excited. 2023. Give Astra and Noel a moment, please. Fuck you, no. We got, we, we got, we got that moment in the manga. We need it seen. Yes. Animated. And we okay, need but oh, 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 speaking of the manga. Oh. The newest chapter. Yeah. Yeah. What the hell? We'll, we'll, we'll get that a little bit, but definitely, uh, as, as of course we know, like the manga kind of dives deeper into some of these arcs that we know of. Was, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure you said your favorite arc was the uh, Spaking arc, if I remember correctly. It was and that and the Van Temple arc. Okay, yeah. Like, did you think that they probably did it well that kind of got you into the anime, or did like the manga kind of prepare you, but it well, kind of met that point? It was like a bit of both because, like, the Sea Band Temple arc got me invested into Black Clover. Then I read the Spade Kingdom arc. That's when I started liking Black Clover way, way more. Because, like, Jesus Christ, that invasion arc was so well handled. Like, you got freaking Magna and Zora kicking Dante's ass. I was like, yes, those two got what they deserve. They got their own screen time, finally. <laughs> And the other fight I really enjoyed was like the one with Noel and Nozelle against Vanica, because that is a revenge fight done well. I love it. Even though that, of course, the, the triad became pretty disappointed. Yeah. Oh, look at this I'm one. About they were to get stepping... to my least favorite fight, which is like the one with Yuno and Zena, because like, seriously, you brought in Longris and Finro, which I'm like, okay, the two brothers are actually going to team up and take down Zenon. Okay, I'm looking forward to it. No, we decided to get a freaking dance ex machina with you know. That's what I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna pull star magic and beat your ass. Uh, again, like the star magic, I really love that concept of it. I, I thought it was a really good magic. However, do you really have to do it in the most dance ex machina way ever? Come on, like it literally robbed Finral and Lars' screen time. What the hell? Oh yes, now since we're going into that, like we can let's at least mention the recent chapter that did drop oh, Black oh, 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 oh. No joke. Uh, I never expected that. Yeah. No one did. These this I just hope that this isn't a Game of Thrones situation where you're just subverting expectations for the sake of subverting expectations. I I hope not because they they are like Black Clover. I'm, if I'm, if I'm correct, isn't it on like a three month uh, hiatus right yeah, now? Yeah, he's planning it out very carefully. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so it's a smart move. But well, let's man, go ahead and do that because thing, which is we exactly are getting what you to the final do. arc as we know of. This is the yeah. it, Black Clover is ending. Yep. Which well, this part. I'm hoping for another version of it. You know, because you can't yeah, just cause... end it after this, it's yeah, got to be a rebuilding. Because mm-hmm, Trey has a point. We need more real building. Because like we got an underwater temple, and which is forced. But after that, nothing else. Which is yeah, a shame. Oh, like, oh, I wouldn't mind. That I, I, I know what they'll do. I know what they'll do. A Magna and Lux spinoff, and they'll just travel around the world. That would be would not funny mind that. Hell. Yeah, that, oh, no, be- I would- Wait, wait, better, better. A second spinoff. We get this ass kicked everywhere. <laughs> you know no. what? I would read that for the comedy value. Yeah, actually. I mean, I would not <laughs> mind a spin-off novel that would probably focus on, like, maybe Yami's foreign land. I would not mind that. Exactly. Like, I'm not a spin-off, too. Yeah. I just, I, just, I just want there to be consequences for this, because I think, yeah, call me crazy, here's what should have happened. It's just a minor thing I should have, that should have happened in Spade Kingdom. After mm-hmm. they saved them, I think Yami and Vengeance should have lost all their magic. Like, they saved their lives, but their magic was completely drained for the tree. That would be very So they'd have to step down, and guess who has to take their place as captains? 
Uh, you know an Asta? Exactly. Yeah. That oh, would the next worked. They they would have stepped up to the next level. at the same level at the same time. So, and then of course you'd have the antics of Asta trying to lead people intentionally. Yeah. That would be funny. That would be funny and actually good character yeah. growth. Everyone, exactly. everyone, get a, everyone get a train right We're gonna we're gonna crack down on leg day. <laughs> oh, and gonna we be have like, okay, guys, I'm going to give you my training regimen so that way you're ready to pass your limit. Oh, fuck you, Captain. I quit. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I don't know if I, 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 I want to see uh, I don't know if I want to see Mimosa or Noel swallows Asta though. I don't know if I want to. I don't know if I want to see that. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> no, no, it'd be like that Pokemon. Hey, hey, Brand it, Brand it, Brand it, Brand it. There's a good exception to that. If Maki and Mary Liana can look good while being swole, I'm sure anything could be possible. Well, I mean, like, it, 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 would, it would be different. It would just be just as awkward as that, like, freakish, like, muscle memory they did with the, with Nezuko and Demon Slayer. Oh, oh my god, god. With the ball game. We're, we're moving on. We're moving on. <laughs> <laughs> with that nightmare. Oh my god. Uh, she was a beauty in our hometown. <laughs> Well, let's go ahead and uh, I do want to hear your side of, of what for your number three, especially with Rising of the Shield Hero, man. Okay. Cause... But first off, real like condolences and heartfelt prayers to the English dub actor. Oh, Just, yeah. That really was hard. Oh, oh, yeah. Sorry, I had to break that. I, I hear that people are starting a fundraiser to help out with that. I am so glad they're doing that because. Billy's really going to need all the love and support you can get. Like, Billy, if you're watching this, we wish you lots of luck with overcoming that cancer. Yeah, man. We, you, you did now for me well, as well as all the other roles you've done. And you earned that award. You really earned that award. So, yeah, let's, let's, I really do want to hear your side of how, how Rising the Shield Hill really grabbed your attention, how it grabbed everyone's attention back in 2019. Okay, because, like, here's the thing. I did not see it around the time of 2019 because I was busy with college stuff at the time. And right when the pandemic hit, I'm like, okay, I might as well check out this series. First episode in and the first chapter in for the light novel. Oh, man, did it really caught my attention because at first I thought, okay, now for me it's going to be like a bland protagonist. After that betrayal... I was proven wrong. Thank mm-hmm. God for that. Because now for me, I'm saying this right now. Now for me is my favorite EC Kai character because like he's someone that you can relate to. Like, yeah, he's a bit of an asshole, but if you look back at it, you can understand his motives. And looking at the light novel, I'm like, wow, that anime really cut corners for the first season, which is not much of a bad thing because like the first season did really well. Yeah, it's, it's not really surprising that. A lot of like both books, movies, TV shows, anime, they do kind of cut and like kind of skip ahead from the source material. It's not, oh, not you hard. have no idea. And it's when they do it poorly. Yeah. And we all know way too many examples of that. Mm-hmm. Way too much. Yeah. You like, would think they'd learn after the first hundred times. Yeah, but it's still, it's still got them budget. So I guess they still are going to do some, but. Yeah, definitely but, the uh, the cast. The cast you would say is like probably one of the strongest points of of Shield Hero. Exactly, because like now for me, he's a bit relatable because he's like that underdog, but like under like the whole classic underdog thing, just like shouting and whining. Now for me, just like oh, you're gonna call me a demon? Might as well be a demon. I I like that approach. I thought that was unique, and I think I also love how like his interactions with some of the other characters that has hope for him. I thought that was really interesting. Like. I, between Nafumi and Rontalia. I definitely love how he's like a bit of like a fodder figure towards Philo. And although, look, ever since I started reading the line novel, oh my God, it actually gave me more characters I don't freaking like. Hmm. The biggest example is the freaking bow hero. Yeah, the bow hero. Um, <laughs> the princess, oh. the king, the pope. Yeah. Those guys like I well, look at it this way. We know who's getting their comeuppance. Yeah. Yeah. 
And also, like, looking at the later arcs, and even the current one that the anime is doing, like, the Spear Tortoise arc, that was a really good arc in the light novel, because it really expanded a lot more on the other characters, and I definitely love the conflict with the Spear Tortoise. Although, I'm gonna have to say this for the anime version. Like, God, are you trying to pull a ReZero and Rosario Vampire for your second season? Are you seriously going to be doing this right now, Shield Hero? It it did rush quite a bit. Oh, and they oh okay, like, that's different. That's different. Not going here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The line novel, it actually gave more focus on Rishia. It actually made her more interesting in the line novel. But in the anime, she kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. Yeah, and just like, and then they just don't really do anything with her after that. I mean, she kind of did something in episode four, but other than that, I'm not so sure what's going to happen. I'm like a little concerned for season two. Um, ho- hopefully, but it also, I mean, with all the stuff happening in the background, I'm sure they, they're they going through some stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I can at least somewhat understand it, though. I'm just like praying that they don't drop the bomb like they did with Rosario Vampire and ReZero Season 2. I'm praying they don't do that. Yeah, but let's uh, let's see about, uh, about Hiro Mashima's next big hit that we all can say is very entertaining is, is Eden Zero. Oh, uh, yeah. I can't say it. <laughs> one of the few mangas that I started reading since day one. Because, like, yeah, we all know our stance on the Alpharas Empire arc. Ugh. Yeah. It's, it's, it would have been well. I'm not surprised it didn't go like, like that. Yeah, because well, no, he did not plan his ending. Yeah, he did. He literally he, made it up on the spot. Like, we're fan fiction writers. We plan better than him because we exactly. actually know how our stories end. Yeah, and that is sad. Yeah, it is sad. <laughs> anyway, when I found out about Eden Zero, I was skeptical at first, but then looking at it. I was intrigued by the first chapter because, like, it really did took an inspiration with sci-fi and steampunk. Although I did love how, like, the manga version took advantage. It took a freaking page out of Tarzan with like the interaction between Tarzan and Jane. Except, yeah, the difference is is that Shiki went a little too closer. Hey, well, oh you know, God, what you did he grab? He grabbed her boobs. I mean, this is this is Hiro Mashima. We're, we're pretty much used to this. Yeah, yeah we, we're used to treating to him having his female characters being treated like meat. But then, but then get then gets into the uh, kind of unique stuff with, especially with Rebecca. If you if you can explain that, Nate. Oh yeah, because like at first I thought Rebecca was going to be like, oh, another Lucy clone. But... It's Lucy, but in space. Yeah, pretty much that. But after like the whole thing went happy, went. I... No joke. When I saw Happy transform into guns the first time in Among Us, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was literally shaky during that scene. I was like, what the hell? And then when I saw Rebecca go ape shit with the Happy Blasters, I'm like, oh my. Like, probably should have gone her bad side. <laughs> yeah. Even she was like, why do you need a bodyguard? Yeah. <laughs> Oh boy, Damn. but of course, there. I mean, the, the biggest thing we could talk about with Eden Zero is definitely the story. Like, the writing for Eden Zero definitely feels a lot mm-hmm. more solid and really grounded than uh, the fairy tale, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it definitely does. Because, like, with the normal arc, it introduces one of my favorite characters, Y Steiner, which at first I didn't have that much high hopes for him until later on, which during the Belial Gore arc, where he got that development. And I, that made me love him more. Because, like, yeah. White Steiner, he's an asshole, but at least he has a heart of gold. <laughs> and and I am legit curious. How do you think that I we will react to Weiss's taste in women? I'm oh legit curious. Oh boy. Oh boy, man. That's that, that's that's a topic. I don't know if we 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 can even say that on the internet. <laughs> yeah, because I'm sure that Awi will might call Weiss Steiner his brother or something. But I'm pretty sure with how he acts towards women, he might beat the crap out of him. I don't know. Literally. <laughs> but yeah, like definitely, uh, of course, best girl's home around. We know that for easily, a damn fact. Easily. Cause... Hermit. Second being Hermit, and then thirdly, uh, Rebecca. Yeah, because 
and the interesting thing, like my third best girl, other than Rebecca, it would have to be a character that you might see later on, EDA, named Clean. Because I really like Clean's character. Is she related to Mr. Clean? <laughs> oh, fuck you. Oh, please. That ju- you threw a fastball down the center of the plate. I had to take a fucking swing. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, like, hey, to sum it up, Clean... Am I gonna? I'm oh, sorry. No, keep, keep going, Nate. Sorry. Yeah, but to sum it up with Clean, like she's a win user. Like she used to be emotionless, but if you really look back at it, there's a fucked up reason why she's emotionless. Mm-hmm. And when she finally overcome that, like it, she she actually became more likable for me. I actually like her as a character. <laughs> oh yeah, especially oh, the most recent chapters. Oh my god, oh, man. Like the Nero 66 in the freaking war arc. Oh my god. Talk about dark and yet Mashima handled it pretty well. For once. Yeah, because the Nero 66 arc, the way it ended, I was I was fucking caught up guard. I was like, Mashima didn't do the French the bullshit. He didn't do it. My props to you, my brother. You actually He's throwing. <laughs> <laughs> all righty then well that's that's uh that was a, those are interesting pointers so like, how would you say you would rate your five through two starting with Jujutsu kaisen uh i would definitely rank jjk eight out of ten the same thing for black clover from the manga uh okay. right into the shield hero for the light novel actually i would give it an 8.5 out of 10 because man some of the later moments that were really well handled Especially with Raptalia, because, oh my god, she got an even more badass. And that new outfit of hers that she has, it's not super fancy to see, which I am glad for that. But, man, it still looks good. Yeah, it does. And, of course, with Eden Zero, I would definitely give that thing an 8.9 out of 10 for the manga. All right, so definitely the one we want to hear the most is definitely... Why do you think My Hero Academia is your favorite manga? Well, yeah, because that's the thing. I originally had Eden Zero for number one, but after looking at My Hero Academia, it's because I've been like reading My Hero Academia a bit longer than Eden Zero, so that's why I had to put it a bit above. But it was like the recent arcs that the late that season six is going to be focusing on. Oh, sweet Jesus! The war <laughs> arc. Oh boy. The war arc took a lot of turns that I was not expecting. We actually had heroes die. Oh, that is yeah. something. Yeah. And even though, like, there are some villains that do get the downfall, it was less compared to how the heroes handle it. Yeah. And even some of them were, even some of the students, some of the students were close to dying. That's what also caught me off guard, especially with that one stunt. That one stunt, I was like, oh, shit. Because that stunt alone got me off guard. (laughs) It made me go look at that character. I was like, that's the same character from season one. That's the same character. Yeah. (laughs) That, That legitimately caught me off guard. It was after that war arc, though. That's when things started to get more dark. Because, wow. Sum it up after the war arc, Izuku has to go solo. Like, he literally went solo. Oh, no. No, I've heard the rumors. Yeah, he legitimately went solo, told everyone the truth. Like, it was like the guilt trip. Like, Izuku felt guilty because he's the one that has, has that power. And he's like, he might as well, like, tell the truth. And he decided, like, to go on his own because... He didn't want anyone else to get hurt. Yeah. And then, of course, we get the whole, like, fiasco that's happening with Shigaraki and All for One. Yeah, because that fiasco was just, like, a huge head turn for me. But I think the moment that also got to me was when everyone in Class 1A tried to get Izuku back. Like, that was the moment that really felt heartwarming. And that moment with Bakugo. Yeah. Finally, finally, he finally apologized and he called him by his first name. Even that moment, I was like, about damn time, Bakugo. 
though he still has that temper, even though he like mellowed out a bit more. Oh yeah, definitely. So you definitely feel that the anime and the manga are definitely at good odds with each other. Exactly, because yeah, like, there's, there's a good enough gap between the two. We're not gonna have to worry about some shitty original animation. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Because like, <laughs> yeah, My Hero Academia did cut some corners, but it was very minimum, which I had to applaud. Hey, we got some movies. Yeah. Yeah. And the movies, while the second one may be the weakest, they, they're they still good. Yeah, that's true. And now, mm-hmm. and, that, and how do we feel like, do we, do we want to say, like, how do we feel like how this, uh, how My Hero is going to end? Like, should we probably I have end no that? freaking clue. I am legit curious on how this is going to go, but I am going to be skeptical. Like, I'm going to keep my guard up just in case. Agreed. But, Regardless of the fact, how would you how would you rank your number one? It's My Hero Academia. How would you how would you rank that? Well, I would definitely rank it a nine out of ten because while it does have some small problems, it doesn't take away the fact that it really come a long way. Because that manga alone changed what shonen is today. It literally changed the shonen genre. All right, so yeah, that was. That's Nate's grid. A very interesting and good pointers, man. Very, very nice to the start of this podcast. Mm-hmm. So the next one is actually going to be Kevin's. And look at that. <laughs> oh, we got a freaking mental link. Huh? How do you wait, know? Wait, wait, we got a mental link? Where? Yeah, my hero. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we'll get into that right after this one, guys. We'll be right back after this, after this short little break. All right, let's do it. All righty. So, yeah, definitely going back to Kevin's grid, which is definitely probably interesting. Interesting. Definitely like the anime you will not shut up about, Plunderer, is on the manga for number 10. <laughs> I was surprised because I thought you would have that higher. Same with, same, you. Same, with, same with Oscar score at number nine. And Oscar. Yeah. And Oscar number eight. Serve the end and uh, and number seven. That I can respect that placement. And definitely, I'm surprised you put you put the Darling the Franks I will manga explain. version over all of this. Well, I will explain. And, and then definitely, yeah. of course, we know Spike's family because yes. that's. Uh, I, I, I almost considered yeah. that from my list since I started reading the manga, it's but awesome. I didn't because well, good. I just started. And then we got Kaiji number eight right there. That's good. Mm-hmm. God of mm-hmm. High School. Yeah. I... And definitely the two shonens that have been talked about a lot right now, which is Black Clover and My Hero. Yep. So let's go ahead and get started with your uh, with yours. Let, let, what got you into uh, the plunder plunderer kind of a story? Uh, well, you know how there's an anime called The Great Pretender? Yes. No. Well, uh, my friend told me about it, and I thought, okay, I'll look up a fun nation. I saw a show called Plunderer, so I watched it. For episode one, I was like, okay, it's pretty good. And I told him, dude, Plunder is pretty good. He's like, Plunder? No, I said the great pretender. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that was very awkward, but that was like, you know what? I'll keep watching it. I like the season overall. Then I started reading the manga. Wow, they really censored a lot of the shit. <laughs> like, like, for one, the use of shit, fuck, and cunt was used a lot in the manga. Oh hmm. damn! That, would that's you say, something. Would you say it's Black Lagoon level, where like every other word ha- is one of those three? No, no. But basically, okay, Nate, Brent, remember when Lick be- uh, revealed his plunder status when he started killing those troopers? Uh-huh. Yes. Basically, when uh, they- when Hino was trying to stop him, he was like, "Are you my enemy too, bitch?" And he also looks at uh, 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 M- Mizune, and he's like. Are you my enemy, cunt? And, it, and I'm just like, what the fuck, Licked? And like, another thing, what I found interesting in the manga was the helicopter pilot was a kid. It wasn't yeah. a, it was a little girl typed up holding oh the motor. I'm like, what the fuck, man? And then like, I just kept reading on. And I was like, wow, this show really goes, uh, shows a few different scenes, like how the characters react to computers, how they react to the modern day. It's, it gets really interesting. And then... I'm sorry, what? It was interesting because, like, 
when we first saw like the chapters and the episodes, it had that fairy tale vibe to it. Like it started off being fairy tale, but later on it just went. <sighs> yeah, it was very fucked up. And then I learned more about mm. the manga. About I read a little ahead. Uh, a little spoiler, Nate. Jail actually gets two powers instead of one, and I'm like, what? What's the other power? Explosion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> iron and explosion. He is Gajio Red Fox and Kotsky Bakugo combined now. Oh, shit. And all, yes. no, 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 Nicholas. In terms of power, it's not personality. But another thing, he and Nana kiss. Yes. Yeah, it gets confirmed. <laughs> and, and what I found interesting, well, thanks to Nate, is like the whole plot twist with Schmerman. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, because like, you oh, thought you literally. You literally thought that the main Shemirman was like, oh, how did he went from nice to evil? But then when I just looked it up, that yeah. evil Shemirman was a clone created by Frenda. Oh, my God. It, it, Frenda it, it, was it, the it, real it, villain. Yeah. And then wh- what I also like is that the series just builds on that. Like, we see all the, the other aces. And, my God, the, the whole thing with Shemirman, like, the fact that he loves Lick as a son is really interesting. Like, I think I just like overall, I like the overall theme of plunder and the manga really shows how dark the series can be, even though okay. the anime does censor some things. And well, okay, yeah, that's why I put it there. How, you know? how, do you, how do you think this, uh, the manga and the anime, like, do you see, like, do you think that's like, aside from like the censorship stuff, is there any like differences that the, uh, that the manga had aside from the anime? Well, I mean, there was like a few, like the anime added more to the date with Licked and Lynn because. They, they only went from, like, the hand-holding to, like, the thigh-groping, which was hilarious. Yeah. But in the anime, they the added anime the whole smart. the whole bridge, the whole sharing drink. So it added more romance. And uh, I guess there was a little... Oh, the cook-off? I don't think it happened in the manga. So that's all original. Okay. And uh, I think the, fly, the girl with the plane, uh, she wasn't in the manga. She was original, I think. Yeah. But it's like... But I think overall, it's also some of the funny moments. Like in the manga, when they were learning how to use a computer, Jail literally just grabbed the the the, the keyboard, and he was like, "Sir, sir, sir, that's not how you." Use. I don't know why it made me think of like that one meme, and it also made me think of Cloudy when it's chance to meatball, where we had the dad trying to figure out how to use the computer. He's like, "Drag it across the desktop." Like, okay, oh. that didn't work. <laughs> But yeah, it's like that. But overall, like, yeah, pretty much the anime and the manga are still the same. Like, there's just a few money, funny moments cut from the manga, a few mm-hmm. things added from the anime. But overall, they kept the same theme, and I appreciate that. Though How about they, the, uh, oh. the, of course, like, going, like, staying true to it, but, like, as we've seen that, as you explained, but what about the uh, the time difference? Like, how did, did that, like, it was that flushed out a little more in one or the other, or did one kind of like they both kind of had that same mentality? It had some of the same mentality, I've noticed, you know, but the way they do the tra- time travel. Uh, but they did explain more of the powers about ballot hoard- holders a little more, and I did appreciate that in the manga. But for all intents and purposes, the anime did pretty well with explaining as well. So I'd say, you know, they're both still equal in terms of explaining any of the powers. All right. So, yeah, that's. That's good. I mean, yeah, we we all we all know you cannot shove shove about that show. <laughs> well, I know you can't show about Dress Up Darling as well. Well, there's hey. another one that we're about to get into. Yeah, there's like another one. We're, we're getting to the, uh, aside from like this is actually one we all know we all watched, and some of us yeah. here have read. We we're going to the Osterisk War. So, yeah. Trey's was, favorite was, anime. Exactly. Really surprised you actually put it not like really not even close to like the halfway mark can go ahead and explain that one well um i watched the anime first i watched both seasons and i really enjoyed it so then i found a manga kakarot the website i used to read mangas i read the manga for asteroids war it was pretty same for the season one although there was something interesting where you know how uh i told you were in this training room and lester and uh, saya came in they said they want to train in the manga, it happens where we actually see Lester fight Ayato a little, and Yola's trying to shoot uh, Saya, but poor Saya literally uses her cannon and blows a hole in a wall. And Hayato's like, okay, maybe training's done. <laughs> <laughs> like, That's done right? 
Yes, when you get to see like the flat chested girl pulls out the big guns, you know yeah. there's like okay. Yeah, but there's also uh, a little Dragon Ball Z reference when I to Kieran are training where they're doing stretches and they do the fusion pose like like pull each other. I'm like, what the fuck? Oh no, yeah, then, that that happened in the manga like so much. I know, but uh, overall, like season one was pretty similar. Um, a few, but the thing what I was curious about is that the manga and I think even the light novel. They don't add the fight, smaller fights in, from the Phoenix Vesta. Like, here's the thing, Nate. You know how we had certain fights where, you know, Aito maybe one shot someone or Sai and Kieran fight like these two students? Mm-hmm. Yeah, none of that really happens in the manga. They just skip ahead to certain story beats. So wow. the anime actually adds more to the Phoenix Vesta, and I appreciate that, you know? That's actually smart. Exactly. I mean, come on. Like, did you guys not want to see more people from other schools using their weapons? Like, even if they're one time, you know, it's cool. Yeah. Oh yeah, and, definitely. And the light novel, from what I've read from volume one, like I like the way they explain certain powers and stuff. I like the way that they said that even if you don't win, like if, even if your wish isn't granted when you win the festa, you still get a cash prize. And that's what I like. Like Ulysses, you got the money, Aito got his wish. And that that was interesting. Like they that, they explain more about how the schools work. Like Galardworth's more about honor and no fights. Whereas Rev Wolf is all about, fuck it, let's fight each other. I like that. You know, the world's built around that. And I've read ahead a bit about the light novel. Dude, when the fuck are we going to get season three, four, and five? Because the content in there is interesting. Like, we get the next Besta, guys, if we got season three, is the Griff's Besta, which is a five versus five team match. Okay. Oh, that explains that whole team up thing. Exactly. Literally. Five people from the school. Each school fights each other. Okay. Okay. So if I remember, it's Ayato, Ulysses, Saya, Kirin, Claudia. Claudia. Yes. That yeah. explains it. The, the harem. The harem team. Yes. Team harem. Team holy knights. Team uh, girl rock band. Team Be- uh, brutes. Team uh, uh, kung fu panda and team. Uh, te- <laughs> okay. Wait, come on. Wait. 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 What? Okay, no, no, I'm, I'm making fun of the school, the schools because cool, it's like very, like night, very interesting, like food. kung fu. They like they're very, very Chinese yeah, martial arts. Yeah, the Zhao. Like it's a bad school. thing. But, no, it's not. Just, but here's you know funny. what I found a few things about the light novel. One, uh, the main, the president of Gallardworth, Arthur, uh, or uh, oh, Vic Mignogna's character. Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. He actually almost beats Ayato. But his sword actually locks up because plot twist, his sword doesn't just uh, go through things. It actually judges someone based on their justice. So when Ernest, the guy's name, actually became unworthy of the sword, he was like, fuck it. Brings out another sword. I'm like, wow. And another thing, Kieran's sword breaks. Plot twist. Her katana breaks and she gets a new one. And I'm like, wow, that's awesome. And I just love the world building from the manga because I hear... There's even a controversy in the series where they're thinking, wait, did this meteor actually make, give us magic or was it there before? Like there's this investigation and I really like that. You know, I like that there's some chapters that focus more on the world. Like hell, there's even a, like, I think on arc where Kira takes Aito to her home. So he learns from her and I'm like, wow. Overall, I think the light novels in an- manga really add more to the story, you know? And as a standalone series, the Asterisk form, it's, it's good. It's fun, you know? But overall, like, the manga and stuff, I want to keep reading, you know? And if you guys got to read the fucking spinoff, Queen Vale's Wings, the main character, Minato, is fucking adorable, okay? She fucking punch boxes. She boxes. It's awesome. Wow. Damn. I know. Sorry. Nice. Oh, you're good, man. That's a... And well, I mean, we'll probably stick with the magic trend because I know you have Magical Girl Spike Ups Asuka above that. Oh my god! Okay, again, oh, oh, oh. I watched the anime and I liked it. Though my okay, if one of if I had a critique, it's that some of the action scenes they're more still shots, and that kind of killed a lot of like it. standoffs. They're not really like actual. Yeah, points. yeah, but it's like <clears> still, uh, you know what I mean. But when I read the manga. There are some things they added, some things they changed. I'm like, wow. Like, for example, the whole fight with the mercenary with Mia, 
that never happens. It's just them fighting the the Voorhees class uh, D sauce. I'm like, okay, okay, nice. And then like I learned more about we learn more about how the powers work, like how the shields work, how each magical girl's power works. Like I like that. And then I read ahead. There's an arc where apparently Pepe and Tamara betray Mia. Yeah. I'm just yeah like, I was like, what the hell is up with that? I don't know, man. I'm still reading, but it's like interesting. And then we learned the identity of Queen. And I'm like, what the fuck? You're which is, like, which is, which is why, like I was I was surprised you guys were very taken taken by that. I mean, I kind of saw it come from a mile away. Yeah, I could see him from, coming from a mile away. I don't even read All the, the fucking while, manga. Just, what the hell is going on? Because I haven't read the manga. Should we just tell Nate? Nate, do you want to? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Tell us. It's uh, uh, Francis. Sean. It's Francis, the one that yeah. died. Yeah, the one, the one that was the leader before Oscar. She lived. What the? What, what, wait a minute. If she died, how did she come back to life? Uh, I think she was revived uh, by someone. Dude, the head exploding in three, two, two one. one. Yeah. Oh, what the heck? What happened? I, I like the series because the manga really explores more. Like we get, we actually get backstory for Pepe, how she met her young comrade. I like that. You know, it actually gives her a bit of character, which sucks because I really. Did like her original design, and then they end up giving her that. Oh like, Jesus! Oh, come on. But overall, like the manga is good, like for what it is. Um, uh, what I hear, what Karumi does to uh, freaking uh, Ali, uh, was it Abby? 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 She, what she does to Abby, and I'm like, ooh. Yeah, it's it's kind of Jessica just just comeuppance. Very, very so much. Yeah, but overall, yeah, it was just, it's just a good series, you know. <laughs> Hopefully season two gets announced because I want them to continue it, you know, because it's a good series. Also, fucking Sachi ooh, in the fucking manga. Like, there's one point in the manga where he's eating the bird food that someone gave the birds. Then he looks at the birds, they look at him, and they fight. I'm like, what the fuck, Sachi? Hey, this is my food, Chu. This is my food. Back up, back the fuck up, Chu. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it for it. Oh, okay, I mean, like, but like, overall, like the uh, you de- you definitely would recommend someone who's like thinking like, oh, the magical girl genre is like not that good. Like, do you think yes, yes, can, I like, would recommend really expand uh, it. Yeah, I mean, yes, I would recommend uh, Puella Magi because Madoka Magica. It's a good series, but yeah, Oscar, like Trey said in the Android anime, it does deserve more recognition as a magical girl series. You know. Okay. So let's go ahead and dive into one that we really do want to see a continuation. And hopefully we will sometime soon is yeah. definitely serve at the end of Vampire Rain. You, you mean you mean Attack of Titan meets uh, Twilight meets a little gay, a yaoi? You mean yeah, that? pretty much. As we all know, it, it pretty much has those vibes. Um, yeah, so to get away from the... WTF moments of Chainsaw Man, I decided, you know what, I'll read Seraph of the End. I'm curious how it goes. And, dudes, the chapters are fucking long. Like, one, the first chapter is like 60 pages. Yeah, it's, and, they're, they're big. Yeah, so I read, and I'm like, okay, interesting. Like, they add a little more to, like, the series. They add a bit more character moments. Like, there's a funny moment where, remember when Yuichiro got left behind uh, by the car when he dealt with the one of the demons and his friends left? In the manga, they do the same with Kim- Kimizuki, where they leave him, and he's, like, waiting. He's, like, <laughs> he takes his swords out, comes out. He jumps on the front of the car. They all get scared. He's, like, cut the shit. <laughs> I'm just, like, wow. But, like, when I read ahead of what happens, like, the ending of the anime where they're at the beach doesn't really happen because we move a few months later. You each just kind of losing it he's ter- slowly turning into a demon and i'm like what the fuck i like, mean yeah he's like the lord he's basically the lord of salt yeah which is like even though granted though that like that whole reveal and like the way the uh the author kind of wrote that is like i don't know how i feel about this um yeah you you say that now but i'm gonna drop some plot twists um for one you know that catastrophe that happened that killed all the adults Yes. It was Gurren. Gurren uh, that makes sense. 
Gurren Why actually am I not him. surprised? Because here's the thing. He did a taboo. He brought back people. He brought people back from life. His squad. From death. Yes, his squad died. Literally everyone in his squad, including Shinya, they died. So now he brought them back. And that caused the curse. So what I like about the manga now is that like we explore more of the characters, like how they feel about certain things. Like even freaking Krell, the lolly vampire queen, like she gets a lot of development because oh. we see how much she likes Mikhail, like how much she cares about him. And I just the lore of the other vampire lords, like holy shit, dudes, like they're strong. Yeah, and it's freaking- definitely like really shows off like a lot of these uh different powers and like different like I- ideologies of the va- of vampires than we than we know of oh yeah and guys then we get the reveal of mikhail and uh, yuichiro like they're reincarnations of an angel i'm like what the fuck like the whole reveal of this whole world is crazy like the power scaling goes from this to this and it's awesome but still what i like is that the series doesn't really change how the characters are like we see that some of them hate what Gurren did but at the same time they're like we're still family we're still going to take responsibility with you and I really like that and I like like development each character goes through as well like they, like, they said the same but like we see how Yuichiro is like he takes all this thing with ironically a grain of salt and I appreciate that eh, grain of salt I know but god damn like right now what I'm reading horrible pun horrible pun I know, I know. I know. But, but yeah, just, just like you guys really, we really do need another season because what goes on is great. Like, I really love it. Like, Trey was right. This is underrated. This is underrated. And it really, it really is. And like, especially with how like much content we have for chapters, do you, do you definitely think like a different studio could probably pick this up and probably finish it? I, I mean, I want to say yes, but at the same time, I like the studio that did it before, you know, they did pretty well. Like, there was a few, a few cut corners here and there, but, you know, it was still the same, and I liked it. Right. Um, but I'm going to say this. Yuichiro x Shinawa is going higher. It's just rising because of how awesome they are in the manga. <laughs> and uh, there's a drunk scene. Yep, and that, that... Oh, God. That was funny. Oh, my God. I fucking love... What lo- chapter I, is that drunk no, scene? I don't know what... I forgot, but, dude, what happens is... Shinoa and Mits, uh, Mitsuba drink yep. what looks like soda. It's beer. Yep. And they end up kind of getting swoovy and cruel. It's like, what the hell are you doing? And they throw up on her. Yeah. And I'm like, and she's like, ah! it, was, it, was it was hilarious. I mean, at least he kind of broke the trend of how drunk people are in anime. At least but, they broke that trend. And the shocking thing about the manga, it makes Gurren better, but it also gives you a bit of depth for Farida and Crowley, you know, the two vampires that gave him hell, like, it actually gave him development, and I liked it, you know? Okay. They're assholes, though. They're still <laughs> assholles. But oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, well, really you, have, you have a vampire that does human experimentation on human body parts, so that's kind of like a self-explanatory. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, let's go on. I'm definitely curious on how, like, we know, like, Studio Trigger does a lot of, like, like, regular ori- original animes. Like, yes. Like, of course, Kill a Kill, uh, BNA, Brand New Animal, but one that got a lot of controversy that we know of is Darling the Franks. Right. And when they came out with this manga version, you you definitely put this above stuff like Seraph at the End, Plunderer, and Ostrich War. Do you want to share share on that on that one? Oh, yeah, I will. Because halfway through Darling, I got confused and a little annoyed, but the manga... Okay, first of all, we get tits. Okay, not gonna lie, we get tits. We get tits. It, it's triggered. Sometimes they like. No, to no, Nate, the Nate, Nate, Nate. We get tits, full tits, no cover-ups, literal tits. Yeah. What? Yes, I'm serious. <laughs> My ex- His reaction is the best. Happens. But it's like what I like is that the manga doesn't fuck up. It actually gives characters development. Like, there's a role reversal with Ichigo and Goro where she's captured and he's free. And we see more of the whole berserker mode of the Franks. And I like that. I like the explanation of the characters. I like how the nines go from forgettable side characters in the anime 
to genuinely tragic characters in the manga. Like, I actually gave a shit about them. I was like, holy crap, why do I give a shit about these guys? The romance between the those two characters, I forgot, because I don't give a shit about them, was better in the manga. It wasn't that forced. Hero and Zero 2, their relationship, a lot better in the manga. The ending, instead of us going to space, finding a space war, it ends on Earth. And I like that. It just, it fixed so much. I had an issue with, like, like Darling and Frank's 12 episodes. It was great. I loved it. Halfway in at the end, Mark, I just, I was, I, I okay, look, look. I don't hate the ending of the manga anime, but the manga does it better. It does, oh, it, yeah. it ends with Hiro and Zero Two kissing finally after the war is done. The whole thing is done. And I really like that. Like it just, it gives all these characters more development. It gives them more sense of purpose. And the fight in uh, Zero One, the queen of the Clock Source. The source, yeah. Dude, she's fucking terrifying the manga. Yeah, like, she, she is. She takes over a Franks. And I'm just like, look, looking at the pilot that she took over with, he's dead. And he's just a husk, just controlling it. I'm like, what the fuck? Overall, the manga, I wish this was the anime. I really wish. It would have been awesome. Like, it, it was just a great fucking ending. It Probably was, uh, one of those rare cases where an original anime gets trumped by the, an- by the manga that was spawned off from it. That's, exactly. That is kind of rare. Exactly. All right, then. So definitely, uh, what? Same thing with uh, Nate. How would you? Uh, how would you rank these? Starting with uh, Plunderer. How would you rank these? Uh, ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. No, uh, I give it like an eight out of ten. It was. It's. It's a solid series. You know, the, with a lot of interesting plot twists. You know, I, I'd say yeah, eight out of ten. It was, it's pretty good. All right, and of course, Ostrus War. Twenty out of ten. Okay. Okay. Um. Honestly, eight point five out of ten. I'd give it that at rating because it's it's a really it's the like Nate said in Anime Wars. It's an interesting concept they do pretty well. The characters are pretty good. The fights are really interesting, and it's just overall, I want more. Yeah, because okay. like it is cliche, but the way it presents itself still works. Exactly. And going to Oscar, we to talk about that one. Uh, combined with the manga. 8.2. It's interesting, you know, especially it adds more to the magic girl genre, you know? Okay. And Seraph, yes. Definitely 8.4. I mean, the concept's interesting. The characters are really cool. The fights are wacky as all hell. Uh, the power scaling gets kind of broken, but overall, it's, it's still a good, simple show. And when the fuck are we going to get Asta versus Yuichiro or Aaron versus Yui Churl. I would love those. <laughs> and then Darling the Franks, the manga version. 8.7 out of 10. Okay. All righty. Definitely so, love that. Anyway. Dev- All right. Now we get to get talk about the uh, Spikes family, <laughs> Kaiju number eight, God of High School, and also Black Clover. So <laughs> t- take us into the one that's really on the hot market right now especially oh. with the, the recent anime of spike's family i'm oh, sorry i'm just getting yeah. very giddy i'm getting very giddy to talk about this goddamn manga <laughs> it's um, interesting because i'm reading it too okay it right now i read this on a whim i saw it on my jump shonen jump uh app i saw it there i'm like okay i'll check it out three chapters and i fucking laughed my ass off this fucking <laughs> Manga. It's like, hilarious. It's hilarious. Like the idea of a spa- fake family with a spy for the father, an assassin for the mother, and a psychic uh, daughter. Like that, that. Where could? How could that go wrong? In every possible scenario, it goes wrong. Yes. Yeah. And it's fucking hilarious. Um, but honestly, the series really does well with the whole concept of family, despite these people pretty much faking their identity. I like the way. You know, Twilight, uh, Yor, and Anya are like they're the three are easily the my favorite characters. Like they they're so diverse in comedy, yet the wholesome moments are awesome. Like when we get to the fucking like after chapter one, I fell in love with Twilight and Anya. Like they were just really good characters. Then moving to Yor, I sip for her to this day. 
Okay. I want to be white for 2022. Yes. Uh, but then I read a lot more and I honestly started like, you know, the character, like Frankie the techie is hilarious as a wingman. He's funny. Um, yeah. Anya's friend, female friend in the school is pretty funny too, though she does something later on that makes me go, oh, young love. Oh boy. Uh, Damien, the pseudo of the show and Anya's uh, love-hate relationship guy. Honestly, he has some depth for a little kid. I like it. Um, then we get to the best dog later. A bit of a spoiler, but Bond, the dog. He is fucking hilarious. Oh my god, they finally referenced the James Bond thing in this. Yes. No. Nate, they named him Bond because of Bond Man from the Spy Wars cartoon on your watches. What is wrong with you? Aww. <laughs> no, but um, Bond is a very funny dog oh did i forget to mention you could see the future yeah how does it do that uh well how does anya become a telepath nate yeah i'm like confused on that too uh, <laughs> experiments but still like the setting is interesting like we're not in a whole high-tech uh, civilization where everything's like drones and stuff it's it feels like it's a old spy thriller you know the old tech you know the old communications the messages i like it and goddamn, the arcs overall are really interesting. Like, we get an arc where Yor has to protect a, a target uh, on a ship while her family's on the same ship for a vacation. And we see how close she is. Like, she really wants to find a purpose to live. And she realizes, my family, they're fake, but I love them. I want to protect them. So it's, just, it's like a really interesting guard. Like, the fights either crazy, but they're really funny. I mean, later on... There's a female spy who simps for Twilight and she challenges Yor to a tennis match. So she launches a tennis ball and Yor swings it, it falls and disintegrates. She literally swings it so hard and fast, it just goes <laughs> through. And I'm, everyone's like, huh? And Yor's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I was, I, I was worried. She sucks. I, no, no, dude. She was just really strong. The girl, the woman's an elephant. It's hilarious. But of course, uh, guys, you don't ever call a woman an elephant. Oh, I shit. mean, like, if you call her that, she's going to grab some alcohol, drink it, and then she's going to whoop your ass. Yeah, that's true. Sorry, I mean, she did but... that to her brother, didn't she? Oh, <laughs> yeah, Yuri. But yeah, still... I saw that moment and was like, oh, damn. And I am not what I love about the as well is that they have little one shots that ex- have more character building. Like Yor and Twilight have a chapter with Anya. Anya has one with Bond. Hell, we even get one for Damien the Sundere, and fucking Frankie gets a chapter. Like, what the fuck? Like, this, this overall, this manga is fucking wholesome. Like, if you guys want a good laugh, good action, read Spike's Family. It's awesome. Okay. okay. And, and uh, as a as it is right now with the anime, do you think the anime has done it justice? Is it like following the manga really well? No, it is following it perfectly. Every beat by beat, that is like following it gracefully. I, I love think it. That's like another thing I had to praise Spy X Family for is that what I really love about it, it's the charm because like it really took the page of the classic spy shows, but it does it in a way that yeah, you may see it in sitcoms, but it still works. Exactly. It's exactly. Oh wow! Yeah, definitely, definitely a lot of uh, stuff we can expect to see in uh, Spike's family in this upcoming season of anime. Yeah. yeah, trust me. Later on, it gets really funny, guys. It's it's just it. I mean, it with the current stop. chapter on on, I, I'm already like jiggling, yeah. and just like smirking. It's funny. all right. All right. So, do you need to add for what uh what Nate explained with uh kaiju number eight as for your no- for your next one? Okay. Well, for one. They actually did kill off someone big. Instead of having them die a bitch way, they actually had him die an awesome way. Kikoro's dad. Like, I love the way they develop the characters. Like, we see K- Kafka. He's not a typical hero in a half shell or anything. Yes, I oh, made a turtle joke. Okay? joke. <laughs> but we actually see that he wants to just be with with uh, Mina. Like, we want to. He wants to be at that level. I like that. You know, in a way, he's like Asta like that, but at the same time, he wants to just prove himself, and I like that. He he is kind of an underdog, but it works. Sorry, it works. 
And also, can we just appreciate the fact that he's not a young shown protagonist? Like, he's not 16 or 17. He's 32, and he's still going. Like, that's awesome. Yeah. And Reno, honestly, with the development he's getting right now, yeah, fuck you, know he 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 could take the Black Clover spot for character development. He's awesome. And <laughs> oh, wait, you're saying you're saying you know had development? <laughs> What's that? I don't I don't know. It, it's not a word he knows in his dictionary. I don't know. But <laughs> Hikoru. Oh my god, this girl is hilarious, adorable, badass. God damn it. Just, the way she does, I, it. Awesome. I definitely want to see a sitcom with her in a bar because, like, I feel like those two could probably butt heads with each other, but I feel like those two could get along. I know a buddy cop series that'd be awesome, but still, her development is just awesome. Like the way she goes through life, and of course, we got Hoshin Uma, who is an awesome Levi character, and his backstory with Mina is awesome. Speaking of Mina, we need more of her. She yeah, we do. Development. And let's admit it, Kaiju number nine is an asshole, but he's an inter- he has interesting powers. Like, the guy makes Kaijus, he can abuse Kaijus, and he shoots air bullets. Like, that's fucking awesome. And of course, the art style fights are fucking top tier. I cannot wait for this to get animated. I oh, need, yeah. And I need Matt Shipman to uh, dub a Kepka. Okay, and Jade Saxon is Kikoro. I need that. We'll see if Funimation or any Plex gets I just, dubbing, right? I don't care. I will pay thousands of dollars just for that to happen. Because they're just <laughs> that awesome. We'll see. We'll see. That's but true. this one, I definitely want to hear your like side of your expertise in, in the writing is God of High School. Okay. I didn't want to read it, but Trey and I have a little bet going where he watches a show and I watch a show or read something. And I had to wa- read God of High School, 200 chapters. First two chapters, I got bored. I was like, what the fuck? This is so slow. Then it get, we keep going to the first tournament and I'm like, okay, this is an interesting fighting series. Like the way they introduce these powers like you wear a bracelet, tells you how much HP and power level you have, and you fight until it's zero. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting. You know, the different fighting styles in this show are really interesting. Like Morty Jin is a really funny protagonist, but he's also badass. Like using reverse taekwondo, uh, like, his kicks are awesome. It was course, interesting that they got Robbie Damon to voice him, but it sucks on how the anime handles. Yeah, that. I'll talk yes. about that in anime. Thank you, but. Then we get best boy Dawe Han, who, goddamn, his story and his, his fighting style is awesome. I mean, Fist of, of the White Tiger, the Kick of the Black Dragon, the Kick of the Red Phoenix, and the t- Shell of the Black Turtle. I'm like, what the fuck, man? That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, and then, of course, Mira is an awesome swordswoman. Enough said. Enough said but about that also, one, indeed. Uh, but also, like, the other character, we get development, like, Ilbio Park, I didn't care about him until uh, the whole dimension traveling arc, and that actually made me like him. He was actually a really interesting character. And some other characters, like the nerd character, honestly, he got really interesting development. I liked it. And then, like, even some of the bigger kind of coordinators of the whole God of High School tournament, they got an interesting power. Like, one had the power to summon a Joker. Like the Joker play set with the cards, it was interesting. We got one that could uh, summon a fucking shark. And it's just overall, the power system is fucking crazy. Like, especially when they go to another t- dimension to save Mori Jin's grandfather. Yes, Mori Jin is the reincarnation of Jin Mori, aka Sun Wukong, which is fucking weird. I can't explain it, but it's, it's, overall, it's, it's Chinese mythology. We know we can explain yeah, it. But what I like is the way they use borrowed power. It's not just from myth- mythological beings. Guys, there's one that literally, one guy literally copied Bruce Lee. I am not shitting you. That's a borrowed power. I'm like, what am I fucking... Does he do the Bruce Lee cries? I don't fucking know, man. I just, I got confused. But overall, the Ghana High School, like, it really added a lot of mythology, a lot of lore that I liked. A lot of the characters, like, they got their asses kicked. A lot. I, I appreciate that. Like, Mori, even in his god mode, he got his ass kicked. And honestly, I like that. I like when characters get beat down to get built back up. I mean, where I was, where I stopped, like, the next God of High School tournament, 
Like it's getting interesting, you know. I really like it, and uh, I really want to read the Ragnarok arc, even though I heard and that. What, and what would you say, like you're a uh, like aside from like all like the Terminator fights? What was which one did you, did you think was the uh, the one that you think? Oh, you, okay, this was probably one of the best ones. I think the one where Ilpio was a part of, like when he and Mori fought for the first time, where they met, where they started to understand each other, like. Because Ilpio knew about Jin uh, Mori's uh, grandfather and how he told him, like, hey, when you see Mori, can you take care of him? Teach him a thing or two about the fighting, okay? <laughs> and I appreciate that. And yes, the anime was not that good. However, they did do a few things right. Like, the, the Mori versus Dawai fight was awesome. Yes. And god damn it, if they had done 25 or 30 episodes instead of 13 we would have gotten some better but overall the story is interesting the characters are awesome the fights are fucking amazing and it, it, i can't add anything more it's just like really good series okay and going into basically what we have for your on this other one was a uh, black clover what, what about black clover man um anime was good decent went from decent to good uh, characters are awesome. The manga, where they did, what they did was awesome with the Dark Triad until they fucked them up with Yuno and everything. Then we got introduced to Lucifero and the Noth, which was pretty cool, but then they kind of fucked it up a little in the end. But now we're getting a new arc with uh, uh, Julius being the next, the fourth member, and it's going to be interesting. I like how some of the characters got more chance to shine, like Noel and uh, Nozel were able to finish off Agicula. We got freaking uh, Magna of all people beating Dante. Overall, it's just they should probably play the songs like "What You Gonna Do When I Come For You." Like they oh should probably God. play that. <laughs> Stupid. Anyways, but uh, hey, if then, it's Magna though, and then Il Ilibe Il, Il, and Asta's the dynamic was amazing. But like overall, you know, I put it high because I'm more familiar with it, but. You know, it could be a little better. They could actually kill people off for good. You know, True. I mean, did you really need to revive uh, what's his name, the lightning guy, the one that confessed his love to that queen? What was his name? Oh, uh, yeah. Naja. Naja. You could have killed him. Could have killed him off. No, you decide. You know what? We're gonna bring him back just so he could tell her, her that he loved her. Like, dude, come on. Even though funny. you know what it was kind of funny. <laughs> Sorry, what, Nicholas Leonard? You know what, when the real deaths do happen, they're going to feel a lot more impactful. Yes, exactly. True. But yeah, overall, yeah, that's me and my thoughts on Black Clover. All right, then. So, once again, like, how would you say you would rank starting with a Spy X family? 9.5 9. out of 10 right now. It's really good. It's really good. All I really right. love the development of characters. And uh, Kaiju number 8. 9.6 out of 10 so far. Pretty, so pretty on even terms with those two, huh? And a uh, god of high school, nine point three out of ten. Wow. Yeah. And then as we know with Black Clover, that's very difficult to say, especially at the end of last arc. But I mean, I'll be fair and give it eight point five out of ten. Okay, yeah, that is a fair. So, as we know, we you you and Nate share the same number one. Can you add on how do you think? Hirokoshi does with uh, My Hero Academia. Uh, he does really well with how the characters are built. Like after the war, we see Zuku go through a dark phase where he's pushing himself to try to save everyone but not help himself, which I thought was really interesting, especially as rematch gets muscular. The idea of the other one for all users helping him out was cool. Um, then we see the class 1A pretty much pushing him to realize he needs help and Kotsky saying sorry is interesting. Um Dobby's kind of an ass still. Yeah. Yeah. He is. Yeah. He is. yeah. Um a and flaming I mean... asshole. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I'm legit curious. Who do you think is a bigger asshole? Season one Bakugo or Dobby? Anyways, uh but uh, <laughs> uh I'll take that sign as it's a both. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, um I like how they're building up this world like heroes are quitting there's not enough people to fight. Villains are going everywhere. I like it. It's like it's like DC in a way, if you think about it, where everyone is fucked, you know? Actually, I can't believe I'm bringing this up. It reminds me of Marvel's Avengers, where we get five years of the Avengers quitting, and the world kind of goes to shit. 
it reminds me of that and i i respect hmm. it you know i like how so this... my hair academia did it better yes they did well that, that wasn't a hard bar high bar to reach but yeah overall like i'm like where it's going i just don't want much toga i kind of want her to die same i just i'm sorry brandon but it's just you know don't give a shit and izuku why are you saying you love her man she's crazy just just grab her neck slowly if we saw a rocket just, you were like hey, okay hey, listen to me this just there. caress her neck caress her neck and then there we go that problem solved okay okay Nick, it's a good, good job good job anyways yeah but overall yeah that's my thoughts of my hero like right now the final arc is curious hopefully they don't rush it yeah we'll see so but uh, yeah your uh stance on how the rating should be for my hero academia uh, nine out of ten <clears throat> all nine out of ten yeah all righty interesting like so know. Next person on the list is actually Nicholas Leonard. And here's his uh, What Whoa. am I fuck? Oh my god! <laughs> you, Kevin, you had two mental links. Yeah. Why is fucking which? Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got Versailles of the Dead. Very interesting. Vers- and then Fairy Tale. Fairy Tale actually made yeah, the number grid. Number nine, huh? And then, Look, Zet- and then Zetman. Dogs, bullets, and carnage. That this one was actually I was re- I'm really anticipating to see how you're gonna explain this one. <laughs> and then Heaven's Lost Property. Oh my god, I can't believe you put that. There. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. When you read the manga, it's a far better story. That's fair. And then of course Bungle Stray Dogs Beast, the uh the Dazai story. Ooh. Uh yeah, witchcraft works. Definitely interesting choice. Second day, I I can assume the manga is much better than the anime. Oh yeah. And then yeah, Kevin had another mental leak with a uh, Black Clover at number two, and this one really I was like I was I wish I was surprised but I was like yeah I kind oh, of yeah. I kind of figured it. Rosario Vampire Far Bill better than and two. Oh, again, I had a high bar to clear. Yeah. So starting well, we're just starting off like. That. Basically, explain like verse versus the dead to those who probably don't know what that oh. manga may be. Oh, yeah, because uh, no anime yet. Um, you guys remember that really shitty movie, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies? Oh, yeah, I remember that. Uh, think that, but set during just before the French Revolution. Hmm. Okay, then. And, and it's. <laughs> And it's not whiny bitch, people bitching about how I'm a woman and I should be treated like a man and all that shit. Yes, it's <laughs> actually flipped. Uh, basically, on a way to an arranged marriage, Marie Antoinette and her brother Albert get attacked by zombies. The entire thing procession gets eaten except for Marie. Yeah, and she arrives. And then her future husband walks in. And it turns out it's Albert, the only survivor. But they realize, oh, shit, uh, if we want to prevent an international incident, uh, you're going to have to cross-dress, and you're going to have to marry the guy. The fuck? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, I am what? serious. Wow. And you think, listen, listen, you think it's just going to be a straight-up comedy, but this shit goes dark, man. We, I mean, Albert straight up stabs a guy to death and with a painful. I don't know if it's a hairpin or a freaking tiara, but very painful. Hmm. And it gets darker and darker to the point demons, literal demons, show up. Because we, like, yeah, it's. Who looked at the French Revolution and thought, you know what this needs? Let's see. Zombies. Zombies. Demons, demons, cross dressing, a little bit of Yahweh. <laughs> you know just... what? Yeah, let, let, let's let's just let's throw all the darts in the board, see what sticks. Hey, listen, it's more... question. Question: Man, it's... Does one of those one of those darts does it include more cowbell? A little bit. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> we were kidding. Oh my god! Christopher Walken <laughs> came, came true. I am. I would really enjoy an anime adaptation of this. 
Yeah, so like uh, this... aside from like all the other horror ones, you think this one definitely lives up to that? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm also just a sucker for a good historical piece that is historically accurate. Yeah, air it's... quotes, historically accurate. It's like accurate in an anime. Yeah, it's a very it's a stretch. Yeah, that's that one. Okay, yeah. So let's get into the big elephant in the room. Let's go ahead to, to fairy tale. Okay, let's be on. I'll admit it. The ending sucked. Okay, let's be honest. Yes. We all, I know it, you know it, everybody who's ever read it knows it. But let's get to the good points. Uh, first of all, no shitty original animation arc. So that means no Daphne and no in celestial spirit arc. Oh. Yeah, that was. No, no, no. Do, no. do you want to know why that's disappointing? Because it's not such a bad idea in concept. Like, I wouldn't it's, mind the Eclipse. It looks really good. Like, Eclipse Loki looks badass. Yeah, it just, it's just not executed to the highest level. No. No. No, it wasn't. No. <laughs> but yes, uh, this, I enjoy Fairy Tale. It's one of my favorite animes. This, the source material is pretty decent, but uh, there are just the ending kind of ruins it. And you also think, like, hold... probably hear Mashima just got, like, do you, do, you, do you honestly feel like when you were reading it, did, did, was he, like, kind of, like, over this, to be honest? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely feel like he was that way. It was also, like, is it just me, or did, like, the fan service for the Alvarez Empire arc, he had, like, a little bit more fan service than you think? Yeah, and there's also just moments just, in like, it that Think about it. Like, Lucy, I get that she's a bit of the joke for the fan service thing, but that's like about seven or ten times she has gotten in that situation. It's like, Mashima, I get it. Lucy's attracted. Don't shove it in her face that constantly. Less, less is more. Familiarity breeds contempt. And that is what happened with me and Lucy. Writing 101. Yeah. <laughs> All righty, so... But yeah, definitely we know, yeah, Hiromashima got his, he, he kind of fixed his shit with uh, Eden Zero. Thank God. And, supervi- and supervising 100 years. Yes. So hopefully we, they, we can actually not pull a fairy tale joke 2.0. of an anime for, two, for that one. <laughs> but how about Zetman? Zetman, I'm really curious about, man. Oh, that man. Yeah, I read, yeah, like a lot of Kevin's list. Uh, I saw the anime and I'm like, I think they skipped some stuff out. So I went online and did some research. Oh boy, did they skip out some of the good stuff. Oh, very good. Uh, first of all, the main characters, and I'm sure they're kind of buddy buddy. In the manga, they're straight up rivals. They will like they want to kick each other's ass, right? And it just gets crazier and crazier and crazier. It is the detail and the pictures and the transformation. It's it's almost unsettling to be honest. Is it like kind of an F, an unsettling version of like Power Rangers morphing? Oh yeah, huh. it's things Power Rangers mixed with David Cronenberg. Oh well, shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that also pretty much describes the monsters because you got everything from bugs to machines, and it is creepy. Yeah, I I can kind of tell by the by the uh, cover alone. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, remind me the main rival. Think Batman meets Moon Knight. And yes, I like, I realize I like that. I like that. I, I realize they're essentially the same character, but. It's still fun to read. It's <laughs> so very fun. But did you think that the anime definitely hit those spots where it needed to, like in the manga, or did they just kind of brush it off like a lot of times they would? Uh, hit and miss depends on which scene. Like there was one scene that they actually got right. The uh, the rival in a party with a bunch of girls. All of a sudden, people start dying off, and he panics. It's like. Shit, a hero would do this, a hero would do that, blah, 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 blah. And then every decision he makes, uh, let me put it to you this way. Dead, 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 
dead, dead, dead, dead, dead. Oh. To the point that it sounded just a handful. Wow. And I'm like, you get your shit together. I could make better decisions than this, and I dropped out of college. Oh. Well, so, damn. Yeah, it's very fun. Okay, yeah. So that that'll definitely be a good, interesting read. But dogs, bullets, and cars. <laughs> Just the oh, art style alone. Alone. Oh, I, I yeah. love it. It's so the art style is fantastic. The so, it's amazing. Uh, basically, genetic mutation a la demons. I've it's been a while since I've read this, but the main character. I forget his name. Uh, and I, I, barely, I barely remember it. Yeah. First of all, I love his outfit, and he goes crazy. He Like, literally, he's got, like, this healing factor. He's got a gun on a wallet chain. And, and I'm like, uh, dang, 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 gimme. It's <laughs> fun. It's action-packed. And the last thing I remember seeing, alliances have swapped. Ooh. Like, yeah, good guys are now bad guys, bad guys are now good guys. So fun, so good. It even got some OVAs. Oh. Granted, I haven't seen them yet, so I don't know how well they were adapted, but I want a full animation of this. Yeah, this definitely is... from a uh, from a technical standpoint and artistic value, this would definitely be like one of those uh, very yeah. artistic animes. Yeah, it's kind of like what would happen if you put Black Lagoon and JJK in a blender. Huh. That that, yeah. that that alone is like, why why That's not animate it? I know, right? <laughs> yeah, and God damn it, when you learn about his backstory, oh yeah, oh, I still get nightmares about that situation. I'm sure anyone would when they yeah. read that part. Oh yeah. Let's get let's get some comedy in here. Let's go let's go to Heaven's Lost Property. Get some, edge, <laughs> some etchy comedy. <laughs> oh my god. What a Jesus one. Christ. What? Heard some things about it. Jesus Christ. Oh yeah. Uh who's he is familiar with it? Me. I've seen clips of it, so I, I, I saw that. I saw all of it. I saw both yeah, I've seen both it shows and the movies. So, main character, like pretty much every anime protagonist of that generation, is a pervert. Yeah. Well, he's also a teenager, so this is what happens when you amplify those hormones to like ten eight, to the tenth or nine eleventh degree. All of us, <laughs> and he just want ironically just wants the quiet life, and then a fucking angel lord falls out of the sky. <laughs> <laughs> not an ain't not an angel, an angel Lloyd, a synthetic angel being. It gets, yeah, it gets it's as crazy as it sounds. And then, of course, more show up. He somehow gets a harem of a two, <laughs> and then amazingly, you think it's once again, you think it's just straight up comedy. No, oh, it, it actually goes like kind of messed up. Oh yeah, the fights are amazing, especially Artemis Bo. Yeah, that alone. See, Kevin, there's a reason why people want Icarus to fight Toka because it works. If he's even there. <laughs> yeah, I think he's dead. <laughs> no, he's still there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right here, you asshole, and watching Gumball. I told you he was there. Yeah. I got bored, so I went to go watch Gumball while eating ice cream. Okay. And yes, Toko would win. <laughs> Nicholas. Once you see it alive, you'll understand. <laughs> Although I need to see Kevin's property too. So we'll, we'll, oh. you know what? We'll, we'll do a bet thing on it, okay? Yeah. And of course, the, when you get to the eight clockwork angel. Oh, heart strings, man. Yeah, yeah, pretty oh, good. Yeah. And then, of course, the ending was just happy. 
Let's yeah. be honest. The ending was great. It was it was definitely a good yeah. conclusion. Uh, I wholesome and it's definitely wholesome. Plus the dub. The dub actually was was actually pretty good. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the killer chop. That's yes. still the funniest part. Which they probably which probably is solely ripped off on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like again, going off to like how would you rank uh, like for styles of, of the dead? How, how would you say that that stands on its own? Uh, on its own, seven and a half out of ten. Okay, I I, I can actually see that. And fairy tale. Let's see about let's see with fairy tale. Uh, probably the same. Seven and a half out of ten. Okay. Yeah. And definitely Zetman. Seven point seven five. Okay. And then Dogs, Bulls, and Carnage. Oh, that's a solid eight out of ten. Good choice. And then Heaven's Lost Property. I'm curious. Uh eight and a quarter out of ten. Oh, interesting. So let's go ahead and go into your second row, which is starting off with <laughs> Bungle Stray Dogs Beast. Oh, this is a fun con. First let's of all, it. okay, this concept is very simple. We take we take Atagawa, we take Atsushi, we swap their organizations. That is it. That is literally the only change, and it is a giant change. It basically retcons everything we think we know about this friend, about this media, because Atagawa on the good guy on the armed detective agencies. Does anybody else just find that ridiculous on the concept alone? Yes, but it works. It, it, it really absolutely happened, works. And then, okay, first of all, Atsushi and the Port Mafia, I kind of like his outfit. Yeah, actually. He, he looks badass in that. The word and Tiger yet, finally gets him looking sharp. Yeah, <laughs> and yet somehow, he and Koyoka still have the best relationship in that whole show. It's it's like they got it perfect once. Let's make it perfect again. In, in another universe, yes, it works so well. Oh, and that reminds me. Uh, in this universe, Dazai is now the head of the Port Mafia, which is yeah, it's, which, which is, is like bizarre, but, but also really, really terrifying. Cool. It, it also terrifying. makes sense it's with how ruthless how he is. is. How ruthless he is. Art style kind of thick on the black outlines, but I don't have a problem with that, to be honest. And the we get a live action movie of this. Yeah. I am so excited to watch it. Hopefully it doesn't suck. I don't think you can suck. Not with this material. Uh, no, phrasing on that. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> it, and I mean, the fights are so cool. Well, and at the end of the day, it's just about a brother trying to find his sister. I can get behind that. Yeah. And if you want to throw in, and if you want to throw in some shonen superpowers and way existential crisis, go for it. It works. I mean, yeah. if I'm if I remember correctly, then they also. I'm pretty sure they were talking about doing an anime for for this uh, for the story. Or was it, oh or, my god! Yes, uh, please. I think, I think so. Well, maybe that was the live action movie. Maybe I don't know, but who knows? Maybe the live action movie does well. We'll get an anime. Yeah. <laughs> Emphasis on hopefully. Oh no! It's already come out. <laughs> yeah. So, witchcraft works, my friend. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, standard magical setup. Uh, on popular boy sits next to a popular girl. Popular girl turns out to be a fire witch. Fire witch turns out to be protecting your an unbelievable power source hidden inside the boy's body. Mm. It's just standard high school romance, you know. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then it turns out uh, there are more. Then there's more than one witch around. Like there's like a hundred thousand of them living in the city. The but the 
and and his lo- and his bro con sister is also one. Yeah. <laughs> but don't worry, nothing happens. Not, nothing happens, but you know there are some people who want that to happen. Yeah, and we give those people this, okay? Because that's fucked up. It is. <laughs> I this is another hilarious one, and it absolutely works. I mean, first of all, just watching Takamiya trying to learn how to use magic. <laughs> the first lesson is, all right, I need you to jump. Not like that. <laughs> and every time she catches him and calls him princess. <laughs> It's hilarious because that's here's the thing. The power inside of him is called the white princess. And when you see it unleashed, ooh, mama. It's, it's something. Oh yeah, but in the later arc, we learn actually learn more about Kakari's life for, for high school. And it is fucked up. Yeah, it's messed up. That's oh messed yeah. Up. Her own yeah, her own mother did this, and this brainwashing Takamiya into marrying her. Yeah, yeah, and we even see a corrupt version of the of the White Princess, and I'm like, uh, that is terrifying. Mm-hmm. But remind me never to piss them off again. Never. But remind like- me never to piss off Kagari again. No, yeah, definitely not her either. <laughs> She's borderline stalker on him. How do you think the uh, the manga transitioned to the anime? Did, did, did it work? Oh, I, I thought it was great. Very fun. I wish we got a dub of it, but I'll take a sub, man. Yeah. Bang. <laughs> it's so funny. These moments are hilarious. <laughs> it's a painstakingly accurate to the source material. Okay. But going off into one that probably didn't hit that mark is a uh, Seki Day. Well, well one, one that you and I definitely have mixed feelings about. Yeah, because first season, passable. Well, changed some few things here and there, but it worked. Yeah. Second season, first half, yes. Second, Second half, no. no. Not so much. Uh, Long bat anime battle royale with girls with superpowers and for girls and a few boys sprinkled in for flavor. Just a little bit. Yeah. I was in a city to because some jackass decided to play be, play board game master. <laughs> Every one of these girls is unique. They have their own powers, and yes, there's a lot of fan service in this, but I'm fine. I think we're all fine with that. We're fine with it. I mean, for God's sake, it's been it's part of the it's part of anime. Just fucking yeah, get, get over it. You know, like <laughs> once I once you read what happens after the anime, woo, shit got real very fast. Yes, it did. <laughs> I mean, characters were literally dying off left and right. Even the main characters' own girls. Yeah, there was a di- re- mass revival at the end, but uh, the deaths still count, and they still oh, yeah. hit hard. Definitely, especially when they like they stayed dead for a time until that last part. Oh yeah, it's not like it's not like they died and then instantly they came back. It was a few. It was a good length. Yeah. Before they came back to life, which I appreciate. Makes you really wonder, oh shit, they're actually going to stay dead. Hmm. Which is a... That's a first. (laughs) Yeah. Especially for a harem. I know, right? Oh yeah, that that one definitely is is something. Oh yeah. And yes, anime, not not the best adaptation, but still better than some of the other ones we get. Oh, hugely. But going to another one that we mentioned three times already, Black Clover. <laughs> the only, thing that we I don't know feel like we're going to mention it a fourth time. <laughs> <laughs> There's really not much to add to it. I like the art style. I love how it works. And I, there is world building in it, but it's not just shoved into your face all at once. It is slowly, bit by bit, different parts at each time. 
at first, and when we find out, when we get into that devil union animated, I am going to lose my shit. <laughs> I, I I don't You're care where lose it, your shit over that. I'm gonna lose my shit over when they animate the Ma- the Magna and Dante fight. The uh, devil Austin and Levi's devil unit. I'm probably going to be on the treadmill working out when it comes on, and then I'm just gonna stop, fall back right off, hit my head on something because I will be blown away that they pulled it off. I'm just praying it's not just a simple flash. And then this combined. I really want some detail in this shit. I I hope so, especially with like the new animation that we had. For oh the last, yeah, the last ha- half. Yeah, of the like the animation anime. really learned the details. Oh yeah. Plus, just also do what they did to uh, give the anim the animation to some of the fans. I mean, they did really <laughs> well with the Dante, Yami, and Dante fight. Yeah. Hey, Dante fought himself. <laughs> also, you never know he would, but like Asta, Yami, and Dante. Yeah, but yeah, definitely, definitely good, good choices, man. Yeah. I, and how would you say uh, Bungle Stray Dogs Beast? How would that stand? Eight that? out of five. Eight out of five. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, and uh, Witchcraft Works. Eight point six five. All right. I feel like there's just a little too much talking going on every now and then. Fair. That's fair. And it, it, it could be kind of hard to read for that. Yeah. And uh, Secu Day. Oh, uh, 9 out of 10. Nice. Good score for that one. And how about for Black Clover? 9 and a half out of 10. So let's get to the one that probably butchered the source material. In the <laughs> worst way possible. Rosario. Run all out, cause my, <laughs> god. my god. Oh, okay. This is the first one I was like, okay, look, when I first saw the second season, I'm like, okay, they took a different source material, they took a different route. Who for the second half? I'm like, okay, fine, no problem. They can do whatever they want. But once I actually read the source material, I've said it once, I'll say it a thousand times. You motherfuckers, that would have been awesome. Oh. Right, first season, fairly accurate adaptation. The only real thing is that Misery was added earlier. Because she was oh, introduced no, in... Because he was introduced in book two, in this part two. Yes. And Ruby's surrogate mother was an actual villain in it. Mm. Yeah, but season part two. I mean, you want to talk about raising the bar in manga? Like, holy, holy hell! Oh. <laughs> I mean, an organization trying to wipe out all humans and create a yokai-only world, and the freaking final boss from part one was a pawn to them. I'm like, uh, shut up and take my money. Like, I want this. <laughs> yes, give me this. Hold give on. me this. Give me, give me, give me. <laughs> give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Why did we not get this? This would have been a freaking franchise. It, you could have had a movie. You could have done this for four, maybe, maybe five, five seasons. seasons. Not only that, you, we could have imagine, imagine if the success of this led us to getting a part three. Of the manga. Oh, that would have oh, been my. awesome. Some, I mean, we could have finished off Yokai Academy and go into a new world. But they have to survive in the human world. And I'm like, that was could have been fascinating to watch. That would have been a great opportunity, but they mm. missed it. They missed it. Oh. 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 But no, nothing can skews the fact. fact the ending of the manga. The manga. Oh, he picks a girl. He picks a girl. The cardinal sin sin of of harems harems. is done. I was in. I never saw that as a cardinal sin. I would be more annoyed if he didn't pick one, and they just kept going on. I'm like, 
no, that's not how real things at all. Eventually, these girls are going to go, okay, you're just stringing us along. Fuck you. We're going to go find some. We're going to go our separate ways. Picking oh, yeah. a girl oh, solves this, and it's some and somehow they still stay friends. I don't think that work in real life. Not but then really. again, these are all so monster girls. So I'm like, okay, do whatever you want. <laughs> and yeah. I love this. Why do we not get more? Apparently, there's even a fucking petition online for Elon Musk to fund a reboot. And I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm I sorry. At- what? <laughs> Yeah, I looked no, it he's up. Also, he's it's pro- a he's real probably like thing. he's probably obsessed with the uh, the cat the cat girl uh, teacher because that that's his thing. He 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 even said it on Twitter. He loves cat girls. <laughs> okay, oh, so maybe we, okay, okay, so maybe okay, so maybe we don't get him to do it because he's probably going to make her the main character. Probably. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh God. Oh that my god, that, that's wow. not a more random analysis, but like, honestly, I want to see how that would work. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That would be stupid. I like, stopped like, Gumball, <laughs> and I just heard Cat Girls and Elon Musk in the same sentence. <laughs> what the fuck are you idiots talking about anymore? <laughs> well, if you had stayed, you would have known. Okay, well, here, plot, hey, plot twist, I was sitting across from the computer watching Gumball, so I heard everything. <laughs> What? Like, what the fuck, guys? What? This is hey, Elon Musk or I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, stop. Uh, stop making me laugh. I'm gonna throw up. I'm gonna throw up. Okay, okay. So, take a break. After. So wait, 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 Nicholas, Nicholas. Wait, wait, wait. I got a quick dark. How do you rank this gem of a source material from? Oh, easy, easy. It is a ten out of ten. Whoa. For obvious reasons. I can agree with oh, that. Oh, yeah. Wow, okay. So well, just I know that, what I'm watching next. No, we're going to take a little, <laughs> no, little bit of break to anime. recover from that. So we'll be right back after this. All right, so we did basically almost everyone here except for one. Myself. Yeah, Trey. Oh, never mind. So, here's my grid. Here we go. No, it's my grid. <laughs> this. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, my. Oh, you motherfucker. The fact that I have Demon Slayer hired little... than Brandon, that's a uh, why. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked that he put fucking Z- D- uh, Darling the Franks manga here. Holy shit. There's a little bit of all of our lists here. Just a oh. little bit. <laughs> wow. Brandon, I you're... knew wait. that Black Clover is going to be mentioned four times. I wait. knew it. it. Wait. We're like, okay, I'm like Iron Man. Nate's like Captain America. Nicholas is like Thor. Brandon, you're like the Avengers movie. You have everything together. <laughs> oh, please. Oh. I'm Hawkeye and anything. Oh, so I'm, so I'm, Ke- I'm, I'm Kevin Feige. All yeah. right. So, yeah, that's this is my grid. And it's definitely, wow. as you know, you, you see Black Clover. My Hero, Demon Slayer, Rosario Vampire, Kaiju Number Eight, Darling in the Franks. I can't believe Kaiju Number One. Yeah, we'll we'll get to that really, really soon. I'm very curious. <clears throat> so, starting off with me is yeah, is Darling in the Franks manga. As people notice, I I am a Darling the I was a Darling in the Franks fan back in the day. But then the second half of the anime came out, I was like, okay, this is not where I wanted it to go. But as Kevin told me, we actually got a uh, a manga adaptation, which is the same story, but it's done better. It's really given more time to flush out the characters and really dive deep into the story and the lore. We don't get crazy aliens from other galaxies coming to earth we don't get all this it we get less of ichigo being a clingy bitch but it's really just the reason why it's so low on the grid especially for for me because i like the manga better is because it is telling the story again it is better but it's still the same story and the ending is definitely leagues better Leagues better than the anime. 
So I do say it's worth the read. And the anime is still worth the watch. I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying to demonetize the uh, the anime. It's not saying it's like it's trash. It's just not, it's underwhelming is, is a way I can probably say it. And yeah, it's still Zero Two is waifu material. She and Hero are a good couple. The Frank's technology is interesting. The Klaxosaurs are, in the manga, the designs are badass. They are bad ass. So, and either way, even though I'm, even though I was a moderator, I'm open, open to everyone else here. If they want to ask me questions about it, they, they can. What do you think of the tits? That, that's the one you asked me about. Yes. Honestly, it's, I, I was, I was okay with it. It's not, not like I, not like I haven't seen anything like that before. So we got that. <laughs> but let's go ahead and I'll actually go into Demon Slayer and yeah Demon Slayer is definitely it's it was one of the highlight animes that I that we that I've seen it's yeah really good the story is very solid but the manga the reason why I have this one though <clears throat> at at this spot is because the manga has been changed time after time and again, all because people on the internet are like, what happened? My favorite ship didn't happen. Where was the- We didn't see this. I was like, let me It's the world's me- smallest violin. And it's playing Literally, just for you. Like, guys, this is not your story. You are not the author. You are not the writer. So let the author do what he wants with the with the characters it's his choice or her choice seriously and that's the reason and that's the only reason why is because like the fans for demon slayer really got to the author and just made the ending kind of worse i mean i mean i like the way it kind of like merges into both feudal and modern era to the mm-hmm. uh how the ending worked but the original one was fine I really don't see a problem with it. Yeah, like, I thought that was well handled. Seriously, I mean... Like, in its own way. The characters are still well-established. Tanjiro actually got better towards the end of the manga. Zenitsu actually grew on me a little bit. Yeah, Inosuke was... Ho- Inosuke's still hilarious. Nezuko is still a good little sister. And we also like the Hashiras, the upper ranks, the demons... And yeah, before the ending happened, Muzan was a big threat. He was a compelling character. It's just the way it ended and the fight with him is just, this is, a again, like like the anime for Drawing the Franks. The manga for Demon Slayer with Muzan was like kind of underwhelming. You, it's like, really? I'm that, hoping that's the how, anime can like improve that a bit. I'm hoping for that. Hopefully, because that's what... And as I said before, with some of these articles saying that Demon Slayer's manga is technically going to be changed in the ending for the anime. So hopefully we see that. I mean, but still, Demon Slayer is still really good. Highly recommend watching it, mm-hmm. especially after Mugen Train the Entertainment District arc. Oh, man. It just made me love two Hashiras. Like, I just love them, both Ren Goku and Tenken. Like, both yeah. of them are easily my favorite Hashiras. Even though, even though one of them. Even though one of them still died. At least he went out like a warrior. Yeah. But let's go into the one that's kind of surprising. It's because I love the an- I love the anime. So I was like, Wings of Freedom right oh, here yeah. is is the Attack on Titan manga by 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 Isayama. And yeah, kind of the same problem with Demon Slayer. The fans hated the original ending They because they were like screaming and like, we wanted Aaron X Mikasa to happen. I'm just... Uh, did guys, they not read it up until then? Yeah. I mean, you don't know. I mean, I don't know what goes into people's heads. I really don't. Because literally the way when that happened, the author literally wrote in a new chapter Basically saying that, oh no, like to Aaron, like, no, yeah, I, I did all this because I would love Mikasa. I don't want anyone else to have her. I was like, that's bullshit. 
that, 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 that's not what Aaron's mentality was when he started the rumbling. That, that's not what he wanted. He just wanted peace for everyone. He literally everyone. he wanted to tear down literally the metaphorical walls of humanity and the Titans. He just wanted to end. He wanted to take. He basically wanted to pull pull the loose. He wanted to take all the hatred of the world down with him. I mean, granted, though, it's still. I mean, the original one, yeah, it's not the best, but the story was good. And I mean, holy crap! I mean, Isayama is the fucking devil. He is the fucking devil. Oh with, yeah, with, with that shit he wrote, killing off Sasha, mut- mutilating mutilating one of, the, one of the best boys and especially just oh i do God. not give a what shit happened? about gabby i do not give a shit about her i really don't none of us do literally still uh, as i said before f f you gabby this may this makes like the way like gabby is it's like it makes aaron like say aaron didn't, didn't do anything wrong <laughs> we're just saying a lot but the only reason why I like reading this and why I like Attack on Titan still is because I I followed it. I was I followed it since it debuted in 2014. And here I am really following it. And hopefully Mappa stays true to their word and they actually either fix it or give it a new ending for for the uh the Attack on Titan series. Oh, so, I can't wait for 2023. We'll see about that. I'm and... wondering how what how they're gonna do their openings because like so far like my war and the rumbling. Oh man, they've, they've broken the internet. Same with the honestly, Attack on Titans openings have broke the internet a no lot. One. But we it sounds like we're being a dead horse with this one. But let's go ahead and talk about a so a dear gem of a manga that the anime. Fucked up royally. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Rosario Vampire. Oh my gosh. Yes. Like EDA says, I wasn't really exposed to the manga when I saw the anime. But yeah, when you read it, this was a golden opportunity to really flush out a lot of fan of like supernatural fantasy yokai monsters cryptids just anything can work with this and you botched it that badly for fan service like I, i'm like i'm okay with some fans like any other guy I, I i can i'm okay with it but when it's the main focus of your story that is not saying you're gonna have a, a strong story because when you see Skune's development in the manga, physically like, and mentally, he he is literally he is like so like like millimeters away from being a full on badass. The final form in the ending. Oh God! I'm like, Wait, where was that in the anime? Where? I mean, the closest we got to that, red eyes for him. All we got was red eyes and a, and a red aura. That's all we got. Oh my gosh, yes. Rosario Vampire is, again, one of those animes that just botched the source material, just like a comic got kill and Dead Man Wonderland. All three of them deserve a reboot, in my opinion. All three of them. And put in a Soul Eater to fix that god-awful animated en- ending for Soul Eater. <sighs> Because the manga was better, as Trey says, but you can't excuse the fact that a lot of this stuff happened and Rosario botched it more than everyone else because we only got two seasons in the anime and we got a good like 14 volumes each for the manga, which is why I had to put it here. But above that, oh... Some people here are going to be definitely curious why I put Chainsaw Man below a lot of the stuff. Oh, I can't wait for Trey's reaction to this. He's probably going to be mad at you. Yeah, again, probably. What else is new? But I enjoy the idea of Chainsaw Man. It's, actually, it's a really interesting concept. 
But does that mean I, I enjoy some of the decisions? Not really. Not, not everything in Chainsaw Man was, was great. <laughs> I mean, the vomit kiss, do we really need that? Oh. Don't yeah. remind me. It was just, that was just. There's a reason why I avoided it. <laughs> but the lore is unique, especially with the most recent chapter. When you're actually, you're bringing in devils and, and actual like yokai spirits into this. It's actually, wow, well, okay, let's see, where this, let's see where this goes. And especially when you had, spoiler, in one of the most recent chapters, like, uh, like, Genji, the uh, the main guy who is Chainsaw Man, he actually fights the Grim Reaper. That is badass. It was badass. I mean, I am still excited though for the anime. I'm sure that the anime is going to do something really unique. So we'll see how that how that turns out and how my how my rankings go with the uh, starting it off with with uh, Darling the Franks. I give this one the manga. I definitely give it. It's it's definitely eight out of ten. It's an eight out of ten for yeah. me for the manga. Good. Demon yeah. Slayer, also an eight out of ten, because of that I know like it's it was uh, still consistent until the ending. Attack on Titan, though, ooh, yeah, this one's a very mixed bag. Um, but if I have to say anything, like before. The cries for the whole like ending change for the for the manga and especially for how the anime is doing. The manga for Attack on Titan is definitely to me it is a eight point five out of ten. I do say people would recommend and, watch, and read it and watch it. Rosario Vampire, easy nine out of ten for me. I love I love the story. I love the comedic moments, the uh, badass moments, the fun, the fun moments. It was just an overall fun ride. Okay. Chainsaw, Chainsaw Man. This one is also an eight out of ten, <sighs> just because the fact it's not animated yet. So we'll we'll see how the anime holds up to it. Okay. Okay. Brendan, don't tell Trey this, but I kind of agree with that ranking with the Chainsaw Man. Don't tell him that. Told you I would find you. Okay, yeah, but Brandon. yeah, let's go ahead and go to my second row, which is with My Hero Academia. As we all know. My Academia is really, really good. They really hit the mark with what they wanted. But the reason why it's not really in my top, uh, like near the top, like even my top three, why it's just still in the top five, is because I'm just, I don't know. There is something about it. I'm just like, something is missing to me, which. Can be can be summed up in in like at a big grand scale, but I'm kind of, you're kind of, I'm kind of missing the fact of we do experience we do see a lot of like characters really getting their time to shine a lot of like like students, but some of them is just it almost feels like we're it was going through a black clover kind of right with some of the heroes and the students especially uh, some of them in one B were kind of push off on the side especially during the war arc we barely saw some of them i mean granted though i mean it's not i mean of course yeah it's with my hero game they are focusing more on 1a 1a is kind of the focal point for a lot of these stories and a lot of these things happening but i kind of want to see like how other people are getting affected by this not just 1a and not just the pro heroes I mean, we do see the aftermath of the war, which to me, the aftermath of the war was a big, like, this to me was the, was the Shibuya arc before I even read Shibuya from Jujutsu Kaisen. It was that crazy to me. <laughs> and yeah, it still, it's, it still holds up good to this day. I mean, I don't know what the, uh, the ending of the manga is happening because we know that both my hero and Black Clover are are going into their final arcs, so we'll see how it ends and how it actually maybe will spawn off a sequel series or a, a spinoff series. I mean, I'm kind of I'd be kind of curious to see like a, a spinoff series of so, of someone else if like if that makes sense to anybody. 
and maybe a uh you know what i'm gonna say this how about a Denki and mineta spinoff <laughs> come on um yeah maybe or maybe if they do like a sequel series like maybe we can maybe see airy as the main character in that one so you're saying a Boruto situation, except it would be from character we actually care about. Yes. I dig it. I dig it. <laughs> wow. Okay, everyone who's watching, fuck you, Boruto. You killed off Sasuke. You killed off Naruto. You killed off Kuruma. Fuck you. Go fucking die. <laughs> but let's go ahead and go into the isekai that I love the most and we all know it is with my with my skeleton overlord but bony man overlord this one let's just say this isekai took me by surprise i didn't know anything about this then the first episode of the anime dropped and i was like i am already intrigued intrigued yeah, enough that i that i finished the entire first season without even knowing what was happening in, in the manga as soon as i read the manga the manga is like darker than what we've seen. Like, for for example, Nate and Kevin, because you guys, I know you guys probably saw season the uh, season three of Overlord. Yeah. It, we know like at the aftermath of like one of these guys is captured by this monster in the uh, in uh, Nazarek. Oh, that! Oh, the tomb! Oh, when. When the foresight group came in, right? Yeah, yeah, we actually see the a- the actual aftermath of what happened with that. And it ain't pretty. It is not pretty, <laughs> especially when like I mean, Enderma kind of like talks about how you uh how they use different parts of her of of the uh, wizard that shouts you're killed. Mm-hmm. We do catch glimpses of that. In the panels, and the uh, the two children that were the sisters of the sorceress, something bad happened. Sold off as slaves and committed suicide. Oh, oh my! Yeah, what the? Not something you want to animate. <laughs> Okay, Funimation, you actually did something good with that for once. Exactly. And just the way the manga stands and Overlord is just, Ein's unlocked a brand new freaking ability. What? Literally. He unlocked a brand new ability. He, had, he, he is at his max. The guy found a skill above that. Season four, we are going to see it. I was I swear to God we're gonna see it in season four, maybe the movie. It is so freaking OP. More so than than Fallen Down, the first spell you see him use against Shaltier. This spell is literally godlike magic. It's it's on par with godlike magic in, in that universe. I Damn. am just wow. This this series is definitely does something well with, with, with an overpowered character and really encompasses all of these other characters, the world building, the lore behind some of this. It's really, really well done. So that's why I say Overlord is, yes. Is it an average isekai? Yes, in a way it is, but there are like really good highlight moments that really make it stand out. So, but let's go to the one that we... Didn't know it was going to be a massive hit until now with Black Clover. Oh, no. So, yeah. Black Clover, I didn't know how I felt. Like, I'm just, I'm getting way too much Naruto fairy tale vibes from this. But watch the, the first uh, few arcs. Yeah. This, okay. Yeah. This, this, this is pretty entertaining. But yeah, the Sea Temple arc. And Noel unlocked the Aqua Valkyrie armor. Okay, that got th- this is getting my attention now. Because it, as we know of, everyone is having room to grow and develop. That's something different we don't see with a lot of these shonen animes. 
especially the writing just makes everyone so good i mean i like i'm again i'm not the biggest fan of mimosa but she also gets development noel yeah. gets development mm-hmm. mary Leone gets development charlotte gets development yami gets development luck gets development you- name a ca- character except, except in for you know. series and it's likely they got development seriously but yes as we know you know is boring i do not care about him <sighs> just i mean kevin and i even talked about this when we uh when we read the first time he unlocked this like star magic bullshit i'm just he and i we were just like the fuck is this like what, like what the fuck my reaction this? to that was just like are you freaking kidding me there's like just when we're actually getting developed from you know just when he's actually gonna die they decide oh you know what we can't have the rival die. Let's give him something he doesn't deserve. Like, what is this? Yeah, Sasuke? Like, uh, because like here, here's all the thing. <clears throat> Vegeta died. <clears throat> just saying. Just, and, okay, so I'm sorry, I'm gonna say this. At least Sasuke learned how to use these powers. At least he trained. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's what you, makes him respectable. You, you know, know is basically you know is basically the the embodiment of a Gary Stew. I mean. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You, know you want to look at a male Dez Ex Machina character? Look at you now. Yeah. Oh, wait. He's a, he's a, he has a lot of mana. Oh, wait. It's because he's a royal. Oh, wait. He's the reincarnation of an elf son. Oh, wait. We're going to mur- urge two Grim War together. Oh, wait. We're going to do all this. Oh, he has the One Piece. Oh, he has all three, dra- all seven Dragon Balls. Oh, wait. He's, he's a Dragon Slayer. Oh, wait. He's also the god of the fucking universe. What is he? God damn. Like, seriously, like, this character is not this creator is literally well you know and it's ridiculous i mean if they do like if you want me to like you know and trust me i tried i tried to like you know but if you really want to get me invested in him do a spinoff with him as the main character and see his point of view i can get behind that and yeah like maybe this will fix some of the stuff behind him it, and not just that give more focus to the other golden dawn members too because like the golden dawn has a very diverse cast seriously it i'm just, just never went out but regardless of the fact the the way the manga like is the recent chapter as we know of this recent chapter was a big what the fuck, fuck moment yeah i mean i mean i i will give you credits I will give you credit, Tabata. Just take your time, plan it out. You you have the time, and you know, like you set that time frame that you you're working on it. So I am anxious to see how what you're what you're gonna do with it, and I am anxious to see the movie because yeah. this will be the first thing we'll see before we know the anime is coming back because we know the anime is coming back. It has to come back. It can't end like that. But. Let's go ahead and go to basically what me and Trey praise as our favorite manga is Jujutsu Kaisen. Ah, uh, yeah, the JJK Brotherhood. So yes, I've said it a lot of times. Jujutsu Kaisen is my is now recently my favorite manga. But will I? Am I a fan for saying that it doesn't have flaws? No. It does have flaws, major flaws. <laughs> like, of course, yes, Shibuya is an absolute nightmare to try and wrap your head around. But it was also just for what for what uh for what Gage tried to do. He definitely gave his best and and all all he had. But I will. S- and I will come out and say, and I do agree with both, with both Kevin and Trey about this. If Gage stuck to his guns, I would love to see Megami as the main character of Jujutsu Kaisen. I would love to see that. Better backstory, better powers. He's more handsome. His dub is awesome. Um, he had better fights. His dynamic with Nobara is better. Uh, oh yeah, Fushigoro, yeah, I mean, right? I'm just listing yeah. off so much shit. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, I just... mean, Kevin, there's a reason why I just love Robbie Damon. He like that. That just works. 
Yes, and, Me- and Megumi is definitely a good character, especially in the Cullen game arc. The Cullen games really made this character. That fight with him so was amazing. Better. I mean, I I still my best boy is Gojo. I love Gojo. My best boy is still Nanami. But but definitely Megumi Fujigoro is one of those highlights. And yes, Yuji is. I I loved Yuji when back in the first time when we see him in, in JJK. And when we get seen with Sukuna. And I think for me, the peak moments I saw with Yuji and his developments was his fight against Mahito. To me, that was like, he peaked right there for me. And then it kind of just flatlined a little bit. Like, I still enjoy his character, but Megami just went above that with a lot of stuff. And especially with how... Mappa handles the animation. It is, oh, it is great. It is awesome. Jujutsu Kaisen level zero. My God, I, I was, oh. I was, I literally was in my seat. Just, I can't, I can't move. Just letting it wash over. I can't move. I love this shit so much. <laughs> you know it's good when they added a bit more to make it more epic. Literally, and that's why I know JJK is coming back. I know it's going to come back. Mm-hmm. But as we know, yes, yeah, Shibuya arc is going to break so many people if they have not read the manga. So be prepared for you anime watchers out yeah. there. Be prepared. You are forewarned. <laughs> but ratings-wise, for these manga titles, my hero. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's... Hard to say, but I do say My Hero Academia, it is an 8.75 out of 10. It is definitely like a high B plus manga. Overlord, this one is actually a 9 out of 10. Because of the fact that this story just engrossed me into the world. Black Clover, same ranking, 9 out of 10. It is just that good. Here's the kicker, though. Jujutsu Kaisen. This one is actually... It is an 8.5 out of 10. Mm. It's... Right. I, I love it. It is amazing. But it, it did take me a little bit to really get invested into it. Whereas these two, I was invested from the very get-go. But the one that is everyone is surprised to see is Kaiju number eight as my number one. Because, <laughs> yes, Kaiju number eight. I knew jack shit about this. I didn't None know what this thing was. None of us knew anything about it. But, like, Kaijus, I like. Transformations, I like. World Destruction, I like. And to add the cherry on top, a man has the power of kaijus. That's like, okay, sign me up. I'll read this. And as soon as I read the first three chapters, the, this, is, this is actually really good. This is a good concept. It's a good idea. It's something that is unique. It's different. It's something we are very, very familiar with, with a lot of a... Uh, it's especially the cast. The cast is like, this is something that I didn't even know if I was going to be invested in. But Kafka, yeah, he's he's actually a really good, really good main protagonist. He honestly, I, was, I didn't tell anyone that I'm surprised. He actually reminds me a lot of, he kind of reminds me of Wild Tiger a little bit in, in some of the Yeah, scenes. like he's literally yeah. like Kotetsu. Dude, and especially because they're both old. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just also when he turns into the kaiju for the first time. That was like, holy shit. Like, this was unique. This was different. That is like the same level as like Yuji becoming freaking Sukuna. Like, what the hell? But yeah, as, as as we know, we have really good female characters. But one of them we need to see more of. Why haven't we seen more of her? (sighs) <sighs> ah shiro yeah it's so sad because there's good potential there really is so maybe the anime can 
flush flush that out because we are getting an anime adaptation of kaiju number eight this is gonna be good it's gonna be something new as for ranking wise kaiju number eight to me it is a legendary to me 10 out of 10 series i'm engrossed with this thing so much it is Pro, it is that's why I was really torn between Kaiju and, J, and JJK because they were like their story, their lore is so good. So, yeah, my manga list may be uh something unique and different to some of the others, but we all had different ones. If I, I mean, so. like, some of ours are pretty unique, so yeah, exactly. So, yeah, this was our very first uh podcast style uh of uh entertainment for you guys. So. Hopefully this does well. And again, yeah, this will be the last thing we were doing for a while because some things for me are just life kind of hard, kind of hard. And it's tell me I about it need, after an injury. We just need to step aside, but someone here actually will be taking over. I'll still be the content creator, but someone else will be taking over with taking care of these recordings. Yeah. Good luck, Nicholas. <laughs> he's like what the fuck not nah, just kidding no yeah it is it's my pal my my friend who did who's been with me since the beginning of this channel is kevin will take over a lot of the uh the recordings and yep. setting up the the beginning of, of all of this yep i'll make some money don't worry guys <laughs> got a trust fund so this is what we have thank you guys for so much for, for this journey and we hope to see you again sometime in the future. Have a good night. Hello.